Federal Communications Commission has determined the following content to be emotionally harmful. Funny things that you think funny aren't funny. Give me cocks all the time. I want cocks all over me. The Alan Cox Show kicks ass, man. Welcome. Welcome. Show me what you got. You're not going to see a lot of cocks on TV. Alan Cox from the Alan Cox Show. I don't know what it's about you, but I can't even stand your I think you're the biggest asshole alive. It's going to be a great show. Let's kick it. I'll say kick it, and you'll just kick it with a tasty groove, okay? One, two, three, kick it. Kick it, come on, god damn it, could you one time kick it? What the f***? Alan Cox. Here we go, he'll ad-lib, he'll be fine. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Hey, what's going on, gang? Good afternoon. Hi there. Greetings. Welcome. Welcome one. Welcome all. Thanks for being here. My name is Alan Cox. You just heard it, but I'll say it again. Say hi to Bill Squire. He's right over there. Hey, creepy hugs, everybody. Creepy hugs. Mary Santora is in Midtown Manhattan. What up? How many lunches have you had today? Dude, I'm just having the half of, I'm having half of yesterday's first lunch. As today's first lunch. Half of this was the lunch with the manager guy, the, the yes. management company guy. What And what was that lunch? The salad? Patty melt. No, patty patty melt. melt. Oh, you only ate half of, mm. you yes. see, at those meetings because you don't want to be, like, too gluttonous. Yes. Yes. And I have a tendency to spill things on my clothes. We so are we aware. I also wanted to avoid that. <laughs> oh, you don't tuck the napkin into your... Like blouse or anything like I that? Should, like honestly. Tony Soprano? You don't yeah. put it up. You I was just get like a meeting apron. A bib? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a bib. Hire me. Hire the cook. I always thought it was so funny when people would go out to dinner and they would put the napkin in their shirt. Mm-hmm. I, I was just like, dude, you were so messy when you eat that you have a non zero chance of getting food on your shirt. Hey, like, you can't plan for everything, but, I mean, people know how they eat. When I go to a seafood boil, I use the bib. You do? I do. Now, why is that? I always thought they add that in there because it's kitschy. I mean, are people really... I've gone to seafood boils. I've never gotten stuff on my shirt before. I mean... I, d- I don't even know if I've ever gotten anything, but it just seems... Because it's a lot of uh, juices flowing around, so why not just use the bib? They provide it. Yeah. It's going to end up in a well, landfill. Might as well use it if it's going to end up in a landfill. Listen, if you know something about me, you know I've never been scared of a lot of juices flying around. And so maybe that's why I'm a bit more hesitant. Yeah, to but I feel bit. like if you go to Seafood Boil, you're eating like one shrimp and then being like, oh, that was a, that was so decadent. I'm Bill, so full. Uh, okay, listen, I'm still an American, all right? Half a shrimp, all right? And I'm Please. not going to get, I'll have half of a shrimp. And I'll have no. Listen, I'm not going. They cook to, with a lot of butter in those too. It I seem know. Like you're seen. Uh, well, I've gone to seafood boils. You know, I've uh, I've gone to a, a crab boil uh, occasionally. You get the big pot, throw them in there, mm-hmm. and yeah. So I might not eat them the way everybody else does, but I'm not averse to. Uh, I like seafood. Um, I, I don't have issues with it like Mary does. She's allergic. I'm taking yeah, grandma for her birthday on Saturday. Oh, yeah? To a, to a seafood boil. Now, I know a lady never tells her age, and a gentleman never asks, but do you know how old she'll be? I have a, a range. Yeah. I, know. I saw her ID one time, and I'm pretty sure. By accident, or did she show you and then she, snatch it away quickly? She was, she was signing up for what was it, Costco, and I saw it then. Mm-hmm. And I believe. And did you feign surprise? Did you go, oh, my God. No, no, no. I was just, but right. I, I, um, you know, she's. I'll, I'll put it this way. She's doing great for her age. Mm-hmm. She's she's really keeping it together, like mentally and stuff. So. <laughs> it's one of those things that sound, is meant to be a compliment, but it could really be taken both ways. You know, well, she's I mean, it's doing a compliment. great. She's doing great. Yeah. She's healthy. She's mm-hmm. uh, still living on her own. She's mm-hmm. still, you know, she she's always talking about, oh, I forget this and this and that. I'm like, you're not doing as bad as you think. A lot of people just forget things. I, I feel like you've just always kind of been a forgetful person when it comes to certain stuff there's also it's people in their 30s deal. who have terrible memories exactly too, so that's, that's, and that's why she's she's very hard on herself over that stuff and uh, it's like it's not that no it's it's it, that's not an age thing the way you think it is i think it's just you got a lot going on for somebody that 
is retired. Like she's very busy for someone that's retired. So you're you're you said you're taking her to dinner. You're t- yeah. to a seafood place. Yeah. Now will you wear the bib? Of course. Yeah. Maybe you just like wearing the bib. I just think it's a it's a. For you, it's like a when in Rome situation. It's a best situation. case scenario. Like okay. why why chance it when they're giving you the supplies? Because then if I get it on my shirt, I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Because I'm like, oh, the bib was right there yeah. the whole time. Why didn't I just use the bib? Other restaurants aren't giving you bibs. Is your point? I don't. They've need given it. me I one. I don't need a bib every time I go to eat. Yeah. I just I I feel like in that scenario with the seafood boil, especially when you get something that's as drippy as all that stuff, mm-hmm. you got the gloves. Why not put the bib on? Understood. It's it's just it's smart. Okay. You don't want to take any chances. Why well, no take point. the chances? Uh, no, no, I'm asking. I'm. I'm. You know. Again, like, I. Who, what am I trying to look cool while I eat shrimp and crab legs? You can't look cool while you're doing that. So why my, why not just make sure you're not getting anything on your clothes? Uh, I'm sorry, Bill. You should always be trying to look cool while you're eating in public. All right. I'm sorry. What? You should always be trying to look cool. You mean you don't wear sunglasses at dinner? Uh. Actually, just bring in protective just, goggles. I, I bring my own protective goggles for that situation. I wear juices. my yeah my WMMS branded Eclipse glasses. Yeah, they are <laughs> the juices are all over the place. Yeah. Well, okay. I wear sunglasses at dinner, and so I I listen anecdotally. Does it seem like I'm the only one that does it? Of course. When I look around, you know, and you can't see that well anyway, so you always have to kind of tip them up. Uh, and then people go, why do you have those on? And I go, it's like the song from the 80s. It's nighttime. That's why I'm wearing them. Boy, what a terrible song. We were in Orlando. The the station that was getting played the most in our rental was a classic. The format is called Classic Hits. It's basically like the lake here in Cleveland. We play anything, and they play 50 songs. Um, classic Hits, but boy, did they play a lot of sunglasses at night. And that you want to talk about a song that is very much of its time as I wear my sunglasses at night by this guy, Corey Hart, and I'm glad this guy never had another hit because that song is so unbelievably bad. And again, massive hit at the time, so it's played on the radio. You know, it's it's one of those kind of throwbacks. People go, oh, yeah, but just like as a song, as a standalone piece of written art, just got awful. So I'm happy that the guy never had another hit, but boy, does that get played a lot down there. Now, it might get played a lot in the lake. I don't know. I, I don't listen to the lake. I got my own problems. Over here. I'm not paying attention to what else is going on there. I forgot to take my morning dump before I left the house this morning. Ah, uh, rookie idiot. move. I was, I, I was. I took two. <laughs> I took three. Boy, Sorry to already? Up, Sorry to, yeah. Oh, wow. All that coil stuff is over. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I ate some, uh, what did I eat? Lettuce. Lettuce destroys me. Lettuce? Lettuce, yeah. lettuce is kicking your ass? Lettuce destroys you should eat healthier me. healthier more often I probably. Lettuce is killing you. Probably. Yeah, it's probably. A so, what are spinach sandwich. and kale doing to you? I mean, lettuce is. I'm 90... not going to go down that road. <laughs> oh, all it's right. It's just a little uh, romaine lettuce. And okay. Boy, does it just fly on through me. Well, I was running a few minutes behind. You know, allergic. I'm uh, to say that. I'm allergic. <laughs> my, my, uh, you think you're allergic, or you know you're allergic? I'm just going to tell myself I'm allergic, and that you're allergic because I have bad eating habits. Well, but maybe, but but when somebody tries to like. <laughs> Um, amend their eating habits like like you're clearly doing, there is kind of that period of time where you have to get acclimated, so maybe that's all it is. Maybe this is the acclimation phase of lettuce. Of lettuce. (laughs) Of of romaine. Fiber. (laughs) So I'm a couple of minutes behind this morning and get my daughter to school and all this other stuff, and I, I, I go, damn it, I forgot to take my morning dump. But I realize I gotta get dog food too. So I peel off and I go into the Target there. Those Target bathrooms, by the way, I first of all they prop the doors open. I don't know why they do that. So like anybody that might be walking outside of the bathroom can hear what's going on there. Uh, but those bathrooms, I'll tell you what, compared to the ones we have here at work, a delight, a delight. I don't know what they're doing. I, I'm sure it's on somebody's uh, uh, rundown task sheet over there that they clean the bathrooms. I don't know what the hell is going on here. But boy, I feel like any morning where I might have missed, I'm not going to wait till I get here to work. Because uh, God knows what hellscape I'll walk into back there. But, yeah. uh, pe- oh, God, you don't know the half of it. Uh, I got to take I a break. Do. Yeah, I, Well, you saw that one picture, yeah? But I've also got... worked there for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like true. I was um, um, a stranger to destruction in the stalls. True. Yeah, if it were confined to the stalls, that would be one thing. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that it's not. 
I got to take a break here. I'll have more of those Tom, uh, Tom Segura tickets for you later on. People hit me up for those. A lot of people have asked when to give away those 21 Pilots tickets. That'll be around 350. Uh, if you want to text me for anything, 35192 to do that, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox.
waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't wanna be an American idiot. A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. The Alan Cox Show. Sure, you could listen to another show, but then how would you find the puppies we've buried in boxes around the city? 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send me a text? Watch live if you like at AlanCoxShow.com. Who's helping out today in the video department? Berber Dormonger. Hey, thanks so much. I do appreciate the assistance. Hey, the White Sox win last night in Cleveland, oh. Ohio. A seven to five victory at Progressive Field. Crap sacks no more. The White. Oh, well, they're so crap sacks. That was their second win of the season. The White Sox go to two and nine. But uh, Cleveland Guardians will get a third and final shot at them uh, tonight. Weather permitting, 6-10, right around the corner of Progressive Field. I believe that game is going to be on uh, WTAM 1100 because we will have the Cavaliers game uh, after this program this afternoon. 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock tip-off. Um, what is the third to last? Uh, second to last is penultimate. What's the third to last? Chernultimate. Chernultimate. The Chernultimate matchup of the regular season uh, here at home, the final home stand for the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Memphis Grizzlies, who are not a great team, but to who knows what will happen. The Cavs have been on a bit of a skid. So 7 o'clock tonight, Grizzlies here with Toud at the Robo Fijo against your Cleveland Cavaliers. All of it here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you know, by the way, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give them props because I guess it's deserved – uh, WJCU is the college campus radio station over there at John Carroll University, and they won Best National College Radio Station Award. That's great. It's a big deal, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. from way back in the day, I, I did college radio uh, for precisely one semester, and it was after I had graduated college. And uh, so it uh, certainly holds no um, big prominent part of my CV, but, um, and again, I don't know if JCU has uh, notable alumni who have come out of that uh, radio station. I don't know, um, but I've listened on occasion. JCU is at the uh, non-com end of the dial there. They're at 88.7. Um, but, you know, we do a metal show here on the buzzard, and we've been doing it for a little over a year. Oh, you do? What's it even called? <laughs> uh, it's called Two Hours to Midnight. We oh, do that it, sounds uh, official. Okay. Saturday. We were off last week because I was in Florida, but... Uh, we're back this Saturday night, and it's uh, a Saturday night metal show. We do, and we love to do it. It's me, it's Corey Roddick, it's Pat Butler. But over at JCU, Bill Peters has been hosting a metal show there for a long, long time. And so you got to give him props, too. Three hours till midnight. Well, his is on Friday nights, ours is on Saturdays. But he does a, a good job over there. So I don't know. Uh, you know, college radio is always a kind of a mishmash. When I was in college radio, it was a format. Because they were hoping... Or what they wanted to do was they wanted to prepare people if they wanted to have a career in broadcasting because commercial broadcasting is very different than college radio. College radio for a long time was basically just they give you a two-hour block of radio and you do whatever the hell you want to do with it. But nobody listens, right, because it's, it's, most of the time it's unlistenable. It's like people sitting in their bedroom playing, you know, but it gets people comfortable with the equipment or whatever. My son is currently doing some uh, radio a couple hours a week at uh, Michigan State University. And they are kind of formatted as well within uh, the format there. They don't tell them what to play, but they kind of give them a few guidelines because the difficulty for a lot of people was coming from college radio and getting a job at a commercial station. They go, I don't know what the hell's going on. I thought I get to play my own music. And they go, no, because we're trying to get ratings. And you're not going to get ratings if you're playing your dumb 19-minute fish songs. But um, uh, I do have to give props uh, to Bill Peters over there at JCU because he's done a metal show there for a long, long time. And uh, so whether that plays any part whatsoever in them winning that award, I don't know. Um, and again, I, I'd love to know if there are uh, prominent people in broadcasting who uh, came out of that radio station. I don't know. Now, back in the day, 
the college radio stations that were always winning these kinds of awards were like Villanova and Seton Hall uh, out there in South Orange. And so uh, for Cleveland's own John Carroll. Isn't that a Catholic school, John Carroll? Yeah. Uh, it's not a big school. You know, our friend Chris Ty, who was here for many years and um, uh, has been at uh, Channel 2 in Chicago for a number of years, he's a John Carroll alum. Gab went there. Oh, Gab Cruz went there. And same with Marcelo. Marcelo Hernandez went yeah. to John Carroll University. Well, there you go. So the college has notable alums. I'm curious He's if got the a radio station. Album coming out called Two Hours to Midnight. <laughs> Have him call me, will you? Um, and so I don't know if that radio station has any uh, prominent alumni. But that's, um, again, I don't know what you get for that other than, uh, you know, a, a plaque on the wall or something, but it's a big deal to them. And, you know, I like to, um, our brothers and sisters in broadcasting, it's, not a small thing. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to live in this country, you better get used to one and one thing and one thing only, and that's murder. Mm. Murder most foul. There's a lot of it. Uh, it's become a cottage industry. There's no shortage of documentaries and podcasts. Mary reads her murder books. My wife listens to them, the figure them outs. So good. I just finished one the other day. What did you finish? It wasn't very good. It's mm. called Sharp Objects. By oh, Jillian, Jillian Flynn. Flynn. The same lady who wrote Gone Girl. Yeah, a very prominent author. Yes, and they made the Sharp Objects one a. HBO this is about series. the woman who collects knives. <clears throat> no, that is called Knife Collector. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> oh, so it was um, pretty on the nose then. That last yeah. one, it won the Juno Award, I believe. Yeah, but yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. That's what I love about Mary. She's so quick. <laughs> very quick. Cool. Knife that's Collector a, is the that's one. That's usually the thing people say about me. You're just so quick. Yeah, that's what and... you get with half a patty melt in your belly. <laughs> what are you gonna do? No, um, it was okay. It was like I read it, I figured it out as you're supposed to do mm. about halfway through, which is a bummer. Like, because with those books, you want to be guessing till the very end, mm -hmm. and that's not how this one was. Until the Much very last like word, if they're yeah. an accomplished writer. Mary, if you want a real figure amount, try dating a woman, right, Alan? Oh, I'll tell you what, you ladies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell hath no fury. Where do you want Anywho. to go to dinner? <laughs> <laughs> figure them out. Uh, figure it out. Mm -hmm. I watched the documentary that was based on the real-life Gone Girl that wasn't actually a Gone Girl sh sh situation. She actually was kidnapped called American Nightmare on Netflix. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, that, yeah. I finally watched it, and that is a very upsetting story. It's wild. Yeah. So you didn't like uh, Sharp Object. Had you watched the miniseries? No, and it's not that I didn't like it. I just um, You just it, figured it out too fast. I figured it out quick, and it's there's some books that, like, every chapter something crazy is happening, or it keeps you guessing, or, like, this was not a quote-unquote page turner. Mm -hmm. Like, I would read it for a half hour, set it down, come back to it a couple days later, whereas, like, some of my favorite books I physically have not been able to put down. Where, like, I finish it in two four-hour sittings because it's so good. I'm like, okay, one more chapter. I just have to figure out what happens next, you know? Um, this was not like that. Huh. I got to hand it to people. Jillian Flynn, obviously, she's a very prominent author, but I watched a show. She was the showrunner for this thing on Amazon that I think only got one season called Utopia about these kids who find out that this comic book is a real thing, and so they have to figure out it's Illuminati and all this kind of stuff. And she created that, was a showrunner for it. And, I, again, I think I'm probably one of five people who watched it, uh, but I liked it. But I'm always so fascinated by people, authors, musicians, who can crank out consistently. You know, you might hit, uh, uh, you might get a couple of bass hits along the way of your career and have like a hit song maybe, but people who just crank books out and sell them. Because after a while, you're selling them based on your reputation. You know, I love Stephen King growing up. He's got a bunch of stinkers, but he's written so many great books. These people who just have these ideas, and they're all kind of within the same genre, obviously, but to have these ideas and crank them out and have people read them and enjoy them and buy them, and it's amazing to me. They're, um, one of My favorite author, her name is Ruth Ware, oh, yeah. and uh, she was actually just in New York City. I sent her a message on Instagram. Um, did she respond? She did, because uh. I saw her. My two favorite authors are Ruth Ware and uh, Lisa Jewell. She wrote The Woman in the Cabin. In Cabin 10. Or Cabin 10, yeah, because I think my mm -hmm. wife was reading that. That's a good one. Yeah. And um, I messaged them, and I was like, oh, you guys should, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's not important to the story. My point is, she has only been making books since, like, 2015, I think. It's not that long, like, in the last 10 years. And she's written, like, eight or nine in 10 years. And almost all of them are like, this is one of the best books I've ever read. 
for me, you know, again, she is my favorite author, but that I'm like every year or two, you're putting out a new book and a new book and a new book and they're all awesome. Like, this is crazy. Well, some people have an affinity for it. You know, they make yeah. a career out of it, obviously. Anyway, I digress. You know mm-hmm. how, oh, sorry. I was going to say, what? you know how I was doing the celebrity bartending thing a few weeks ago? Yes. Uh, they're, they're actually have an author doing it tonight. Is and, it Ruth Ware? Because otherwise, no, Mary won't care. Ruth no. Ware. <laughs> so it's, uh, what's her name? Something. What is her name? Not familiar with her work. Paige Turner. Sarah St. Clair. Paige Turner. Paige Turner's funny. <laughs> There's that win. There's that uh, win. There it is. I was going to say, quickness. there was a half a second where I was like, God, that could be a real author. Either she's making a quick joke or that's a real author. Because no, Paige Turner is a perfectly normal name. That's a normal but, name. Yeah. No, it's Sarah St. Clair, and she's uh, doing a book signing. Now, that's signing a porno tonight. name. Come on. It says she's a, doing a book signing. Is it a book about porno? I don't know. I don't read. What? <laughs> what does the flyer say? <laughs> the information that I, you're all reading. All I saw was she's doing a book signing, and that's all. And she's celebrity who are attending tonight. Sarah St. Clair. All right. Well, Angels I, 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 cried. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, but um, murder most foul in this country. Two stories that jumped out at me are the lawyer who killed. Did you want, see the one about the lawyers in Vegas or the med student who kept, killed his mom? So these are pretty wild. There's a guy um, in Vegas. It's a very prominent attorney in Las Vegas. A guy named Dennis Prince, and he and his wife Ashley Prince were killed by another lawyer, this is in a deposition, this is in a room, killed by another lawyer who was the woman's former father-in-law. Well, that's okay. why. All right, so do fo- that again. Okay, do follow again. me here. Okay. okay. So you've got Joe Houston, who is another okay. prominent Vegas attorney. Joe Houston is in, in a deposition with Dennis Prince, one of his Vegas peers, who is and his wife, Ashley Prince. Dennis and Ashley are married. Attorney on one side of the table, Joe Houston on the other side. Joe Houston used to be Ashley Prince's father-in-law. Okay. Okay. He's representing his son, her former husband. Okay. Her attorney is her current husband, this Dennis Prince. Okay. So the guy who's representing his son kills the other lawyer, the former daughter-in-law and himself. In the courtroom? bang bang no, like it's in a deposition. Oh, he was but rep- in like this. In a this was part proceeding. Yes, yeah. this wow. was part of a custody situation. So the his well, then ex- his son gets custody. It seems like. <laughs> but think about that. It worked. They had joint physical custody and legal custody of the kids that they shared, but then Ashley Prince's lawyer, who is her current husband filed a motion for sole custody. She had just given birth to a baby with the new husband. Man, her this current is a lawyer. real bummer of a story. So the, de- yeah. so the lawyer goes in representing his son against his former daughter-in-law and her new husband, who is another attorney. Bang, bang, bang. That is bananas. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll be honest. I didn't see that coming. I did not figure that one out halfway through. <laughs> So the lawyer and so the the woman and her lawyer, the new husband, he's in his 50s. She is in his 30s. The lawyer who killed them, her former father-in-law, he's in his 70s. Older guy, older lawyer, goes in there representing his son, made sure that the uh, his son got custody. He did. Yeah. I mean, who else is? His son, Dan, Dylan Houston, was married to Ashley Prince for four years. Because his son years. had, I imagine his son had no idea that his father was going to do this. No. Right? He's like, Dad, I need a huge favor. Could you do me a, a favor? One. This is a big one. Son, I love you. I'll do anything for you. I got this deposition next week. What would you like? Is there any way? Now, I know there's, my first thought was, are there not metal detectors anymore? Like, when you walk in, they, just regular people walk into a courthouse or walk into the justice center or whatever Were the they hell they call it. Were they doing this at a courthouse? It was in a deposition. It was in an office. Yeah, but, I mean, an office is different than a courthouse. Like, if they're doing a deposition at one of their offices, there's less likely to be... A metal detector. I guess Whether so. I, I got it at a courthouse. There's probably going to be a metal the initial detector. report looked like they were at a place that would have a metal detector, but I guess not. It must have been in one of the offices. They said that he was representing his son. Dad, could you kill both of them and then? I'm so Your sorry. Son. Yourself. 
Um, he was representing that way, his son. I don't look like I planned it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Shortly into the deposition, three to four <laughs> minutes into the deposition, Joe Houston stands up, co- shoots both people across from him, and then kills himself. Must not have been a very good lawyer. He shooed he did away. Not, he did not uh, believe that's in his a abilities. That's a pretty good lawyer. This guy's going, he's doing the most. You kidding me? No, he's. A, he's I would say that's more dad stuff than lawyer stuff. Oh, yeah. He, he, it a didn't matter if he paid. thought he was going to win. Yeah. The, yeah. He was doing this pro bono, I'm sure, for his son. Right. Uh, they said the victims obviously were very specific targets, noting that the uh, lawyer had shooed other people away from the office at the time. Imagine that. <laughs> hey, you guys aren't going to want to be here in, I don't know, three to four minutes. You guys want to find a safe place to hide? Because why? Oh, I'll tell you what. These hearings can get pretty contentious. There's going to be a yeah. lot of verbal. Uh, there's going to be a lot of verbal bombardment going on in there. I wouldn't want you to get hit with any shrapnel. Wink, wink. But imagine that. Uh, the guy he killed, the woman's new husband, Dennis Prince, very prominent attorney there in Las Vegas. They called him a litigation superstar. Mm, I'm getting more Lionel Hutz vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you may know me. No, <laughs> I'm Lionel Hutz. I'm thinking of what's his name? Who's the other? You may know me You're from such of, a uh, Troy McClure. McClure. Troy McClure, yeah. I'm Troy, Troy McClure. Lionel Hutz quotes, Mr. Simpson, I was just going through your garbage. <laughs> and I no, get to keep all, you. It says no money down. No, 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 they got this all wrong. No, <laughs> money down. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Commas save lives. Mm-hmm. Lionel Hutz. Oh, the late great Phil Hartman. Speaking of getting shot. On Judge Snyder. Is that bad? Well, he's had it in for me ever since I kind of ran over his dog. <laughs> you did? Well, replace the word kind of with the word repeatedly and the word dog with son. Oh, boy. Lionel Hutz. <laughs> son. <laughs> and then the other thing that jumped out at me was this kid in Florida, a kid who had just graduated... Um, at the very top of his um, medical school class. And he went home to visit his mother. I guess he told her he was going to be in town uh, down in Florida. I said he was going to see his grandmother or something. Uh, he had gone to the University of Florida in Gainesville and had traveled to the town called Frostproof, Florida. And he was going to stay with his mom. And he just told cops later on that on the way down there, he realized how much his mom had been pissing him off, and he was going to kill her. He killed his mom. He knocked on the door. She opened it up. And when she did, again, I don't know why you'd knock on the door of your mom's house or whatever. And um, he was visiting her, knocked on the door. She opened it up, and he stabbed her 70 times. That's so many times. They were talking to him afterwards, and he's like, my mom and I had a good relationship but you know what? She really got on my nerves, and I decided on the way down that I was going to kill her. Uh, stabbed her 70. without provocation. Well, that's when you're mad, boy. You know, when they have these, like, oh, we got shivved a couple of times, you know. These cases where they just want to make sure this person is is dead. No, that's not they want to make sure they're dead. They're angry. Well, yeah. Hmm. That's why these MEs are always you know like, much- they're always like, yeah, they got stabbed 70 times. 65 of them were post-mortem. You know, they were long dead, and he kept jabbing her. Well, just the energy it takes to stab somebody. Do to repeatedly mean? do it. That's what I mean. 75, yeah. like, yeah. The, yeah, that's your a, that's arm, a and like, rage. that's cardio. Yeah. Uh, they got all of it on the doorbell cam, so that's what shows what's happening. Uh, he had a small knife in his right hand hidden behind new his ring back. ring ad coming. What's that? There's a new ring ad coming. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you don't get stabbed 70 mm. times with the new ring. His beautiful mother, who was so excited to see her son open the door, the second she did, he charged in and started stabbing her, and he kept doing it until she fell down and died. He told detectives that he knew where to stab her for maximum effect because of all of his biology classes from medical school. He cut his hand in the stabbing. They say, too, that that happens a lot. There's always cuts on the hand of the stabber because there's so much blood that it slips in your hand. So you can't hold on to the handle. So you're going to invariably cut yourself when you're stabbing somebody that many times. He went to the kitchen sink to wash himself and the knife off, and it occurred to him he was going to ask his mother for the Neosporin, but noticed that she was dead. Noticed. Mm. And uh, called 911 and told them uh, what had happened. He said that he loved his mom but that she irritated him. 
Uh, he said, I've wanted to kill my mother for many years because she got on my nerves. And they said, what was your relationship? And he said, about eight out of ten. Imagine if it was seven. <laughs> Stabbed her 75 times. He made up his mind on his way from Gainesville to her home that he would murder her. There were no drugs. There were no alcohol in his system. And they had no arrest record on the guy and no history of mental health or abuse issues. Valedictorian of his medical school. By the way, wow. I don't, I don't is, know how. This is insane. It's a wild story. And people are like, oh, my God, he was a summa cum laude and this whole thing. I'm like, I don't know how we have this notion that because somebody's smart, they could be a psycho, by the way. Well, most psychos are smart. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, is well, it mad, them, but... mad scientist is a trope in books and movies and, you know. Yeah, but mad med student. That's mm, not, still science. Not, I, but there are a lot like Dr. Evil. Uh, <laughs> Well, some, wasn't he a doctor of psychology? I don't know if that I mean, it, but it's still like he went to he, he went through the paces. Where did Doctor so Evil matriculate? Where did he go? I I don't know. Oh, he was Dutch, wasn't he? he was Something by like that. A, uh, or his what do you say? Fourteen year old love slave with webbed feet. Mm -hmm. A Dutch chocolatier or something like that. So this guy will never. Uh, my thought is, if you really know how to stab one someone for maximum effect, it would take. Very few stabs to kill them. Right, but he so he wanted to. He was mad. For, yeah, yeah, the rest were just for him. bonus stabs. For him, uh, have a couple of bonus one, stabs. One way to get out of your student loans. They don't follow you through prison. I mean, how are you going to pay them? What are they going to do? Put you in more jail? <laughs> yeah, they're going to yeah. they're going to garnish your license plate yeah. wages. Hey, you know how you make a nickel a week? It's going to take you four million years to pay us this money back. That's the long con. Maybe this guy is a genius. I'm not waiting for Joe Biden to pardon my student loans. I'm going to murder my mother. Hmm. We're pretty wild, though. But think of what an asset he'll be in the joint. You know, get him on the inside. A stabby guy? No, a guy with his knowledge. You know, only take him. I mean, in the immediate blush of something like this, obviously, uh, once his brain's not in a froth anymore, he's going to be like, oh, my God. I've killed my dear mother, and he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, probably. You know, but he'll be a, he'll be a, um, a doctor in there, no, he help not, out. He was pre-med, huh? He was pre-med. I don't think he's. It said he graduated top of his class in medical school. Oh, I thought he was still pre-med. That's what I read. Anyway, I got a break. Uh, murder. Um, hey, don't do it. I got to take a break here. If you want to send a text, 35192. You can watch live at alancoxshow.com. If you like, listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. I went to Chris's friend's house, and I walked in, and it was the smelliest place I've ever been in my life.
is the buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Thanks for turning me on and allowing me to spend this time with you. I hope I can turn you on. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. Beatles and Billy Preston, don't let me down from, well, this is during Let It Be, I think. It was 54 years ago today. I haven't even born yet. You imagine a world that I'm not in, Bill? Just for a second, take a thought. I imagine it all the time. (laughs) I mean, for, don't interrupt. Paul McCartney basically told everybody the Beatles were done on April the 10th, 1970. They hadn't, um, they wouldn't have all the paperwork signed and all of the tax stuff figured out. You know, you have to dissolve a corporation, a legal partnership. And so that wouldn't happen for another few years. But um, they were pretty much on their way out anyway. And and Paul McCartney had been uh, doing some press. And it was April 10th, 1970. He said the Beatles are done. These guys weren't even 30 yet when they broke up. They were all in their 20s. Let It Be would come out a few weeks later after Paul McCartney said that the Beatles are done. I think he initially pitched it as, I'm going to take a break from the Beatles, which is as good as saying the Beatles are done. Mm -hmm. So he had uh, filed all of the paperwork to dissolve their partnership that Christmas, but it was worked out pretty good for him, huh? It worked out pretty well for all of them. I mean, they all put out solo albums that year, know, in some, 1970. Some it didn't work out quite as well for because John got, Lennon it didn't work out so murdered. well. Yeah, he got murdered, and then George Harrison got murdered by, by cancer. cancer. Other than a jam session in 1974, Lennon and McCartney would never record again, but they all did uh, solo albums. And it's funny, too, to think about, um, you know, it wasn't long after that that they were offering the Beatles princely sums of money to do a reunion concert. A guy named Bill Sargent, who was a big, big promoter. Four or five years later, he goes, I will give you boys $10 million for a reunion concert. And now you laugh. But obviously, back then, 1974... Uh, that was massive, massive money. And then they said, no, we want nothing to do with it. Two years later, he comes back. He goes, I'll give you $30 million. They go, no, we're going to be fine. And then not even a year later, he goes, I'll give you $50 million to reunite. And the Beatles said, no, thank you. Uh, We're not going to do it. But in today's dollars... If you offer them $50 million in 2024, that would be $330 million. And I bet they would still say no, had they all lived, right? That's probably not enough to have reunited the Beatles in 2024. I mean, they'd all be late 70s by now, but $330 million. Uh, Mary, would you reunite with your former comedy partner for $330 million? Absolutely not. She's Mm. a bitch. Oh, I thought it was a guy. Nope. (laughs) Oh. You're wrong. You're right. Uh, I, I really, I gotta, I gotta update that bio <laughs> page or something. It, dude. Oh, hmm. I texted my mom this morning. I said the Beatles broke up 54 years ago today. What? <laughs> they did? Wow. What? <laughs> She's surprised she didn't know they broke up. No, she didn't respond. Oh. Aww. Why would she? <laughs> well, sometimes she does. She just hasn't written back to my last two texts. That just means she's busy. You know, mm-hmm. my mom stays uh, busy. She's, uh, I don't know what she's doing, but uh, she stays busy. And um, I like to check in with her, make sure everything's okay. New man? What's that? New man in her life? Not a new man. I I, I don't know, actually. 
No. Yeah, she's Maybe. not texting you back. She's not texting me back. Nope. I guess I'll find out if she sends me a text that wasn't meant for me. That's I guess that's what how I would find that out. What might that say? <laughs> it's it's a you up text, but it's at seven thirty at night. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels sprouts have settled. Yeah, that's, oh, God. She's out on her fart walk, bro. Where's mom? She's out on her fart walk. Yeah, no, I don't know. I have a feeling that my siblings would get me hip to that uh, before anybody else. I mean, how else am I going to hear? They'd go, hey, just want to let you know. But even probably not even that. My siblings probably wouldn't get me hip to that. I'd have to pry it out of my mother. But just taking her at her word, she wants nothing to do. She hasn't. She wants nothing to do with any kind of um, romance. Um, I mean, that's what after says, my father. And then you meet the right it is what everybody again. says. Yeah. But this part, this time in your life, right? It's just for companionship, right? Uh, I don't think that that's like. She's got her dogs. She's got her chihuahua. My siblings are all around. You know, like when my grandmother got remarried, she married her neighbor, right? Because his wife died, and they knew each other, and then it was like. He's close. He's close. It's proximity. He's right next door. He's a nice guy. I mean, he was a, a decade behind her, and he still died before she did. Um, very nice guy. But, uh, no, I don't think there's anything like that going on. But I don't know. Uh, you can leave us messages any uh, variety of ways. Of course, you can text me during the show. You can leave them on the iHeartRadio app, a little talkback button there for you. Voicemails, you can leave those on the After Hours line. We had a lot of messages coming in last week. Uh, 216-986-8903. Alan, you were just talking about uh, Harry Potter land or world or whatever in, in Florida. And, and you said the guys are there. They're wearing the robes and the scarves and the thing. But, hey, what's, what's the thing? The thing went away for the war a while. Now the thing came back. What's the thing? Were, were they carrying wands? Was it... Uh, you know, a pensive from Dumbledore's office. Was it uh, a spell book? Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Nerd alert! What's, the what, what, what's his point? That I didn't clarify the thing? Uh, he know. gets mad when you just say the thing. He gets. Well, he gets mad when I say the thing. Or like, oh. a, not obs- but he's like obsessive about like, you just say the thing and it's not specific enough for him. And it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what the thing is. I mean, see, that's we a be- all got that. We all got like a whatnot or the thing. Yeah, or- that's the beauty of it. You get to use. What do I got to hold your hand, other? dude, through every stage of life? I, I can't do everything for you. Come on, that's, you get to use your imagination the for the rest of it. You get to figure out what I'm talking about. It might be a Horcrux. You don't know. Read the books. You decide. No, not you. Nerd alert. Him. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. Oh, he sounds like he read the books. Hedwig or a wand. I'll tell you what, though, when we were walking through Universal, as big as it is, I was like, I have to admit, as we were walking through, because I've never been to Disney, but I assume it's just nuts to butts, right? Well, Universal, it's not like it was um, poorly attended. A lot of people there. But it was not nuts to butts. But, boy, when you, because apparently the way that you get back and forth between the two halves of the park, if you've bought tickets for both halves of the park, is through the Harry Potter train, the Diagon Alley or whatever. And you they, there's no sign for this. So you got to find out where this thing is, and then you go through this door, and, you know. And that's, when we walked through, I was like, oh, my God, this is where everybody is. Obviously, it's narrower because they're trying to make it look like old-timey, like the movie, like these old-timey mm-hmm. alleys and things. But that is where it's nuts to butts. And you're all the stores, you know, they're trying to replicate the stores and things in the movie. So... As far as that goes, it's pretty cool. I mean, I saw all the Harry Potter movies. I, You know, my older kids read the books when they were younger. I liked the movies. I enjoyed it. I have no connection whatsoever to, like, the um, the nerd part of it. You know, the people that are in there, and they're like, well, is this wand or that wand? I'm like, I don't. What? But every store was full of those people. And I was like, man, this is where they're printing their money mm-hmm. is on this friggin' Harry Potter thing. Your sister's like a big Harry Potter person, right, Mary, you said? Yes. Yeah. Potterhead. She's got a tattoo. Is that what they're oh. called? Potterheads? I think so. Aren't oh. They? I would think it would be something a little more Did I make that up? slick than I, that. I, I, I don't know. I've never heard Potterheads. I've never heard anything. Oh. <laughs> Maybe mm. I made that up. I don't know. She's it might be. Head. I just don't. Yeah, I'm not that deep into it, so I don't, I don't know what they call them. Uh, she got a tattoo. Not potheads. No. Oh. She recently got one, or she got- No, um, she's had it for years. Oh. It's a death eater. Oh, God. I don't know what it is. Is that the big thing with the- it's got a snake. The hood. 
The what? Like a snake and a oh, a snake skull or something. Mm. You're thinking she... of the Dementos. <laughs> no, <laughs> the Fresh Maker. The Fresh Maker. No. Das Freshmaker. The Dementors. Dementors. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I, I this is what I'm saying. Right. I never like finished the movies. That's what care. I'm saying. A Death Eater and a Dementor are different. I don't know how. My favorite thing to do is watch that movie with my sister and my niece and say things wrong, and it drive. It makes them so. Just unreasonably mad. Like, instead of calling it a whore crux, for years I've been calling it a whole clux. And that's the funniest thing in the world to me. A whole clux, yeah. A whole clux. They're like, wait, what is Harry's whole clux? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, just stop talking. I call him Hargrid. (laughs) Just, just, (laughs) just, you know. You're your sister's Bill Squire. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Like, to, like, me to you, you to her. Yeah. Just, what are you, what is Hargrid's job? He's a gamekeeper, gatekeeper. What does he gatekeep? <laughs> like uh, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and it makes her very angry. Well, she cares so much about it, and yeah. she knows what I'm doing. And why is that? Is it childhood nostalgia? I think so. Yeah. So I think, it, and I'll just be like, so when does okay? When does Gandalf's whole clux attack <laughs> Harry? And she's like, I can't even talk. Oh God, to you you're just trolling her. <laughs> oh yeah. Big oh. So. When Harvey Potter shows up, yeah. are his parents there or Who's Harmony's dad? Is his eagle friend around? Why play or... the game if if you get the golden snitch and it's just over anyway? That's what, right. That's actually a good question. Uh-huh. That's not a question. That is a good question. It's like what's the point? They they have a re- game going on and then somebody grabs his gold snitch and is like, "Oh, you scored all these points, but who cares? They got the snitch. It's over." Hmm. Okay. Cheat code. Did Nora get a $60 want? No, she doesn't care about Harry Potter. She's not, that's not her thing. I mean, she just wants stuffed animals all the time. So I did buy her a cat. You're still buying the stuffed animals? Still loves the stuffies. The yep. rules in our house have switched to you have two trunks and a full bed of stuffed animals. And if you would like to spend your money on your own stuffed animals, you may. But we are not buying any more stuffed animals. She probably has a hundred stuffed animals just at our house, and then I don't know how she has it at her mom. Well, I was gonna say you're a you're a uh, piker if you're doing that. No, listen, we've tried to get what does piker mean uh, an amateur. Um, if I doing what making her buy her own stuff? No, 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 no. I thought you were gonna say she had a hundred. I was joking that like a hundred is that ain't nothing. That's nothing. Oh yeah. no, she has two houses. Though. Right there, you yeah. go. Okay. Brian's daughter is also eight, and I I mean she has. More stuffed animals than any person I've ever met in my life. Right. And so we're like, hey, you want a stuffed animal from a place, then you, because she gets money for like her birthday or from the Easter Bunny or whatever. And we're like, we're not spending any more dollars on stuffies. If you want a stuffy, and then she'd be like, well, this is $40. And we're like, exactly. Like, that's the whole point of what we've been trying to tell you. Right. No, we have one of those uh, beanbag chairs that's just filled with stuffies. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's donate these to kids. Yeah. Let's give these to other kids because uh, we're trying to um, impart to her the value of doing those things. And she has. She's donated some. Give them to my dog. She'll ruin them. I mean, we have a dog. <laughs> I, you know, I know, but, but my dog will rip them to shreds. And yeah. then, he, then it'll show But then you're cleaning up stuffies. all that crap. Well, I'll let her do it at your house. I already yeah. have a dog who would rip those things up if she could. Well, if she could get her hands get, on them. Let, let her get her... But anyway, so we're in one of these stores and we're going through and she found this cat and she liked it because it had like this, you know, there, there's a lot of uniformity out of these things, but some of them have like a really derpy face and that's kind of what she's looking for. And so she grabs one of these cats, not knowing or not caring that it is a character from Harry Potter. And I certainly don't know because there's no tag on it that tells you what it is. We're just in a Harry Potter store and there's stuff down. So she grabs this. And the girl behind the counter was positively crestfallen that we had no idea the character or the cat or she's trying to tell us. I get, we're like, yeah, cool, I whatever. She this is just what the one she likes. So ring it up, please. She's like, oh, this way would walk in and tell Gryffindor when I'm like, I, I don't care, don't care. I just want to get the hell out of here, and you know. But boy, they are really into it. Yeah. And God, I, say, I mean, though, listen. God bless them. I mean, I, I don't, I, I have no truck for uh, childhood nostalgia, but I mean, I um, get it. God bless. I them. mean, I did a college gig in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and there's like four or five places from the office that are real working establishments, and I felt insane. I was, it was like one of the most excited I've ever been because I've been so obsessed with the office and I've watched it so many times. That just knowing, like going into um, Alfredo's pizza and getting a slice of pizza was like, this was the, you know, 
part of a, one of the most memorable episodes or like Cooper's seafood and like going into the buy a Dundee like that was super exciting for me. So I that whole that gig. whole town like fully leans into the office. No, not the oh. whole town, because there's a college there, and then um, there, like I said, there's like four or five places that you can go to that are from the show that are like a Poor Richard's Pub. I went there, had a fake beer, bought a hoodie, uh. you know, got a glass that says Poor Richard's Pub on it. It's actually the, a, a bar in a bowling alley, so it doesn't look like it looked in the show, but the name Poor Richard's Pub is actually a place. You know, the pizza place, Cooper Seafood. Like, there's a couple places, and every time I walked in, I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. So I understand that type of fandom. So the show, I assume that these places just changed their names once the show got super popular. The show no. the show took names of actual places? Yes. Oh. And the, I've, I have a feeling those places saw a huge boom. Because, like, oh, the course. pizza place, mm -hmm. it says, like, Alfredo's Pizza, as seen on The Office. Yeah. And, like, they have merch from, like, the as seen on The Office or The Office's whatever, um, famous from The Office, blah, blah, blah. So those places, I think, are making a good amount on tourism. And Leslie David Baker is probably, probably actually working in one of them, right? I don't even know who that is. So, yeah. Who is it, Bill? Le Leslie David Baker? Oh, that's Stanley. Stanley, Stanley. Yeah. yeah. He's probably working at one of those establishments. Why? I don't think the guy has worked since The Office. Has yeah, he? but I'm pretty sure he made a lot of money from The Office. I bet he didn't. I bet, I bet those it. other I bet people he, did I bet he not. Made just make... enough to, to live off of. It. You think? And, and then they get residuals still, and it's not huge, but I think he's doing just fine. And Thirty nine cents a month. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he does the count. Oh count yeah, door. well okay. Signings and stuff. Mm hmm. Him and Phyllis, arm in arm. Mm hmm. And they've right. done a few ad well, campaigns Phyllis and stuff. Has, yeah. Uh, Phyllis has that inside, inside out, money. out money. Yeah. Oh, is she in that? Mm -hmm. She's sadness. Oh, yeah, I've mm -hmm. never seen that. It's a good one. All right. You actually he, could probably benefit from watching yeah, that movie. Yeah, he needs to watch It's all about that. emotions. <laughs> oh, I have emotions. People think it's I don't about have emotions. understanding, processing, and uh, emoting them. I'm able to do all that. I just don't, okay. feel, I don't feel that people need to be subjected to mine all the time. Well, you should watch this movie. With well, your I mean, I'm sure I will. You'll learn I mean, something. Once, what's that? So maybe you'll learn something. It's not about learning. People I think, think I, people think I don't have emotions. I process I didn't say them. That you didn't. I, uh, no, but a lot of people think that uh, somehow I don't have emotions just because I'm not subjecting them to mine all the time. That makes people think that you're like a robot. We've talked about this. People think I'm a robot because I'm constantly not telling them things about me. who cares. Nobody cares. The audience I is care. not my therapist. I have one of those. That's not what the audience is for. Audience wants to hear us fart and you know. Crack wise. No, they get mad at that too. They don't get mad at that. Some of them do. Some, Some of them do, but those go, people go, are go, 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 poopy go. heads. They, <laughs> they don't know what the. <clears throat> they don't know what's good for them. <laughs> That's what's good for them. <laughs> when my daughter decides, I still have a hard time getting her to watch movies. So when she comes to me and goes, "Hey, I'm always suggesting Inside Out. Want to watch this?" Nah. Well, what's it? Well, I was waiting for that Jack Black Minecraft movie to come out. She'll want to be first in line for that. Have fun. No. She will, I'm sure. I got those Tom Segura tickets. He's on the Come Together tour. It's going to bring him to Cleveland. He's going to do the Romo Fijo. End of September 26th. Uh, TomSegura.com. If you're a fan, want the info. But after the break, I'll have a pair of tickets for you. This is The Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart.
become a certain type of F1 fan. Hear these podcasts and more on your free iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. It's time to give stuff away. I want to go see comedian Tom Segura coming to Cleveland this fall on the Come Together Tour. It's going to happen Thursday night, September 26th at the Romo Fijo. Tickets and info on the show and the tour. Uh, go to TomSegura.com for all of that, S-E-G-U-R-A. Otherwise, caller 10, this pair is for you. So good luck, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Alan Cox. A drummer. Not even a real musician. He just makes a noise. If he played the violin or the piano, anything that made sense, but the drums. 100.7 WMMS. Hey, my White Sox finally made something happen last night here in Cleveland. 7-2 Seven to two over the seven to two or seven to five. Seven to two. Seven to five. Over the um, Cleveland Guardians. Just wanted a little something. Seven to five, the final. Third of three is tonight. Uh, you'll hear that uh, over on WTAM. We will be airing the Cavs game uh, tonight as we get into the last three, last home stretch of the regular season. The Memphis Grizzlies are in town. Is that John Morant? Uh, he's out. He's out. Yeah. Is he in legal problems or he's no, injured? No, he got injured. Okay. He came back from his injury, from his suspension and then got injured pretty fast. Mm. Out for the season. Memphis Grizzlies in town tonight. Um, 7 o'clock is when the uh, tip-off happens. So 6.30, we'll get into your pregame here on MMS. And you can also listen on the iHeartRadio app. 79 games down, 3 to go, according to the Cavs' Twitter account. Donovan Mitchell is listed as available tonight. Take note, ladies. Oh, they mean for the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dean Wade is out with a knee injury. Twelve players are listed as out for the Grizzlies. So, uh, anyway, there you go. But people in the know are calling the final three games of the regular season crucial. I don't know whether or not that's true or that's just clickbaity sports stuff. Uh, but you will hear it here uh, tonight. Sam Kinison died this day in 1992. Do you remember Samuel Kinison, Esquire? I didn't know he was a lawyer. Sam. <laughs> Sam Kinison. Every yeah, never, never really got his. Stuff. Oh, you really didn't get into no. Sam Kinison. I did not, I, I was, did not like him. I'm not, not exactly surprised. Pro woman. No, I, I'm not surprised that Mary doesn't like Sam Kinison. But just, again, he, he just, just screamed. Hit yeah. me. At, he hit me at the right time. He was very much uh, of the moment. Um, yeah, I wasn't in that moment because by the time I had her, I mean, I was ten when he died. So it wasn't right. like this guy's crazy funny. Like he was just a guy that screamed and did drugs and. Yeah. A uh, 10-year-old Mormon kid wasn't really looking at that, going, like, this guy's the best. Understood. No, I only got to see Kinnison one time, and it was when he, he was r- very much past his prime. He could barely stay vertical on stage, so I didn't get to see him. Uh, I saw him at probably that last theater tour that he did. Um, but 1992 is when he died, and ironically, of all the ways that people thought Sam Kinnison died, uh, would die. Uh, car crash was not one of them. At least not in the middle of the desert. Right. But every few years they keep uh, saying, "Oh, we're going to make a Sam Kinison movie," and they've had people attached to play him over the years. They uh, a guy named Tom Shadyac who directed Ace Ventura, the sequel, and Bruce Almighty, and you know he had a Sam Kinison biopic all lined up. He was going to have um, who's the guy? Uh, you know who Dan Fogler is? Yeah. He was going to have an actor named Dan Fogler play him. <clears throat> and then somebody... I saw the screen test, I think, for that one. Was that? I think I saw that screen test a few years ago. Oh, Fogler ago. to play Kinnison? Yeah. And then Larry Charles had a script, the, the guy who directed Bruno and Borat. Yeah. And he was going to have Josh Gad play him. And so, you know, the further you get away from it, the less I think people are probably interested in a Sam Kinnison movie. But... They that dark side of comedy documentary had an episode on Sam Kinison. And again, it's largely his brother. 
kind of still carrying that torch. And he definitely wasn't everybody's cup of coffee. You know, he had a real Schwarzenegger, Stallone type situation with Andrew Dice Clay uh, in the 80s. But it wasn't everybody's cup of tea. But I did like Sam Kinison. I see, I like Carl LeBove. I got to work with him a few times and mm-hmm. got to know him over the years. And, uh, you know, he was he was a, a friend and he passed away a few years ago. And he he was incredibly funny, but Kinison just never really uh, hit did it for me. Mm-hmm. I remember a comedian when I first started to show me some Kinison stuff and he's like, isn't this great? And I was like, I don't like it that much and he's like what you're crazy and i'm like it's just it's not that clever and it's just like i get that he's quiet at first and then he yells the punchline <laughs> yeah. but it didn't really right. you know this is in 2004 when i was watching this it wasn't that cutting edge then yeah right it was very much of the time mm-hmm. like nobody else was doing what he was doing and um i mean i was probably i mean like the whole thing where he's like Oh, uh, you want to get divorced or you want to get married? Look at my face. Ah! Ah! I'm like, All right. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, that boomer You're humor like, That's like, funny. You're screaming in the like, guy's face. Why, why are you marrying somebody that you don't like? I don't mm-hmm. get that. Like, stop doing that. <laughs> right. And then they put him in, uh, Rodney Dangerfield put him in back to school because Rodney Dangerfield was the guy who really. Um, See, Dangerfield, I love. I think Rodney Dangerfield right. hilarious. Rodney Dangerfield was the guy who really launched a lot of those guys. Mm-hmm. He launched Dice and Sam Kinison, and, mm-hmm. you know, he took a shine to those guys because he, you know, was further along in his life when he really blew up. I mean, Rodney Dangerfield didn't really – he did stand up as a young man and then quit and sold carpet for 30 years or something, you know, and then uh, midlife kind of became yeah, Rodney just, Dangerfield. but In his mid-40s. He yeah, early mid-40s. Up, yeah. But uh, it wasn't everybody's cup of tea, obviously. But I, I still have a soft spot for um, for Sam Kinison. Um, here's a lady who found out. I, again, I don't know if this is from the ring camera or elsewhere. This is a town called Kinston, North Carolina. We have bureau chiefs in the greater Raleigh area who listen on iHeartRadio. One of them sent me this story from nearby Kinston. Uh, about a woman uh, named Carolyn Taylor who found out uh, that someone has been fornicating with her 2008 Toyota Avalon for some time now. She's 82 years old, this poor woman. The condition is referred to as mechanophilia, a sexual attraction to machines or vehicles. And... um, she hoped it was just urine, uh, but uh, turns out that might might not be the case there in Kansas. Was arrested for using her car to sexually please himself for three years. Bailey Bachover is live in the studio now with the details. Bailey. Yeah, Dave Courtney, police use the word mechanophilia to describe the behavior of a man they say they caught on camera. That's a sexual attraction to machines or vehicles. The owner of the car. You think the cops made that up? You think they made no, up mechanophilia? No, I think it's probably no, just a real. thing that's out there. Oh, you think so? There's- there was a documentary on, like, My Strange Addiction of a guy who thought he was in love. He thought he was in a relationship with a roller coaster. Like, same thing, where he would, like, try to make love to it and kept getting kicked out of the park Yeah, but I don't and- take any of those kinds of shows seriously because it's well, like, why? I'm addicted to eating couch cushions. No, I you're not. I believe it 100%. They are not. I fully, fully believe that. These conditions never even existed until there was a television show about them, uh, and no everybody way. wanted to get no, on TV. People not- have been doing crazy stuff like this since the dawn right, of it time. Right, just, there wasn't, people would go, oh, that's just Larry, he's just weird. But you Keep know it's tough about couch. yeah. You know what's tough about dating a roller coaster? Ups and downs. No, it's a, metal. It can't reciprocate. Any <laughs> oh, you know, know it's, it's a wood roller coaster. It, 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 little splinters. Yeah, like, no, it's on. no good. Anyway, back to Bailey Bachover at WITN Television there. Carr says the pieces of this several-year mystery started to come together when she took her car to the shop multiple times, and it was suggested that someone was doing something on it they shouldn't have been. 
82-year-old Carolyn Taylor of Kinston says it was a couple of years ago when she started noticing fluid underneath her burgundy 2008 oh. Toyota Avalon and thought something was wrong Wait, with her hold car. On. Turns out that Kinston police believe that the fluid was... Yes. He fell in love with an Avalon? <laughs> yes! Yeah. Maybe he's a Roxy music fan. Could it be that simple? That he just loved the dulcet tones of one Brian Ferry and mm-hmm. Brian Eno and had to... Oof. I guess he, he liked a thick sedan. I mean, that is that is the fat white girl <laughs> of sedan. Is that true? I know nothing about, uh, I know nothing about uh, the fat Toyota Avalon. Oh. <laughs> I know nothing about fat white girls. I know nothing about the Toyota Avalon. It's just a, like, full-size sedan. Hmm. Maybe he does. Body positive. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Body work positive. It was from this man, 52-year-old Walter McRae, who engages in mechanophilia, or a sexual attraction, to machines or vehicles. I thought something was happening uh, from under the hood of my car, uh, because whenever he'd come up here, he'd probably... Urinate all over the hood of the car, and it would run all down. And I thought it was something coming from under the hood. I took That's my car to the shop three times. A warrant against McRae says that on several occasions, McRae also climbed on the hood of Taylor's car for sexual gratification. <laughs> Taylor says this has been going on for three years, and she could never catch him with her own camera until finally, <laughs> Kinston police were able to with a camera they set up. They caught him on camera. They came uh, Monday morning. And they took the films out, and they come back to the door and say, we got him this time. She said, we got good films, we got good pictures. This lady's so lovely. She goes, they took the film out of that camera by my door. Oh, the Toyota Avalon, 2008. That was a good year for full body. Stop showing the victim. I don't like this. (laughs) Oh, they took the film out of the... uh, I mean, what, imagine you try and buy that car used, and the Carfax has all that stuff on it. Peed on, humped. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> this car has salt. been really, yeah. really used. Um, they usually don't get salt damage down here in I the w- south. <laughs> I was going to oh. say, is that show up in the Carfax? You if your car has been humped, if it has, let's say, semen damage, does that show up in the Carfax? I thought the Carfax was like things... That had been fixed with the car. Yeah, I, I that you just that. wipe off. Mm. Well, Do you? It adds to the yeah, you can physically wipe it off, but mentally, can you? No, you never mentally yeah. wipe it off. I'd All right, well. Know. I would want to know if I was buying a car if it had been peed on and <laughs> <laughs> spermed on. on. Yeah. If it had been spermed on. Spermed on. <laughs> hey, Woody. Oh, hold on. I thought I picked him up. Woody. Helen. Yes, sir. How's your day, brother? Ah, uh, so far so good. You're interrupting my Roxy music time, Woody. Oh, that's bad. That's bad karma for me. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. What's going on? Nothing. You guys just talk about Sam Kinison. Yes. And uh, yeah, like you said, he he hit me right at the same time he hit you. I thought he was an hilarious comic. But uh, you said that uh, Dan Fogelberg was going to play him as an actor. <laughs> no, not Fogelberg. <laughs> yeah, Dan Fogelberg was going to play Sam Kinison. He was, like, so soft-spoken. They go, you'd be perfect. I mean, that's another guy who's been dead a long time, Dan Fogelberg. Uh, they heard Longer Fuse, <laughs> and they go, God, this guy's going to make a great Kinison. Yeah, I, that's, what, that's what you said. Like, Dan Fogelberg. No, Dan Fogler, who was an actor. He, I think he was on the Goldbergs. I used to watch that show. He's in the Harry Potter universe. He plays a character in those spinoffs. And, and he had a, how did he get famous? Balls of Fury? He had like some I don't know if that got him famous. Low budge movie the, called yeah, Balls of Fury. Yeah. He was in that. Yeah. I don't know if people go, oh, that classic. <laughs> Ball, the ping pong movie. Yeah, well, Balls of Fury. All right. Uh, so what do you, th- you're, you're giving me the thumbs up on Sam Kinison, yes? I am giving it two thumbs up on Sam Kinison. It was, it was uh, all right. He was all right. All right, thank you. There's sure Woody, another like, county herd. If from. I had been older at that time, I probably would have thought he was funny. But again, it just wasn't. I mean, when he was in his peak, I was like six years old. Yeah, no, so I understand. Yeah. On the subject, by the way, it what made me think of this movie I watched not long ago. 
on the subject of a guy humping a car or being sexually attracted to vehicles. There's a movie called Titan. Has anybody seen Titan? Titan. It's called Titan, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Titan with an E. Uh, Titan. It's a French movie from a few years ago about this woman Why that gets. Why do you even have to ask? If if the next sentence is going to be it's a French movie, you well, know we're that we haven't different... seen it. Uh, no, I don't know anything. You guys watch different kinds of movies. Nobody on the show but you watches French movies. I don't know that. There. I, I mean, yes, you've you never do. Seen, you do. Know, yes, you've you never do. watched a French movie. No. Why oh, on okay. earth would I watch a French movie? I because they're for the French parts on Inglorious ca- Bastards. They're kind of famously great at cinema. That's why. Are they? Yes. Well, I don't want to read my movies, so no. I'll stay in America. <laughs> Thank you. We're at freedom. <laughs> Name one freedom. famous French movie. Uh, the Four Hundred Blows. Never heard nope. of it. You you've heard of these That's movies? That's also a porno. <laughs> yes, it is, but. French cinema, it's it's like world famous. Okay, well we're gonna save you some. You time never took a you, you never took a film uh, course in college. No, nope. I didn't go to college. I'm not she, asking you. She, uh, of all the things I know, I know you didn't go to college. I'm asking the other person who did go to college. You I never took, took a, a f- French film course. No, not, not French film. You never took a film class. I never did. We've talked about dinosaurs and oceans and all this dumb crap. A I lot of it. people take film classes as an elective sure. to get through. And invariably, you're going to end up watching a couple of French movies because they're legendary French directors and films. All I'm saying is, moving forward, you don't ever have to ask that question again. Has anybody seen the French? Fi- nope. Nope. Mm-mm. No, we haven't. I mean, you've seen films directed by French people and Probably loved not. them. Maybe. Yes, you have. Who? The prof- Luc Besson, The Fifth Element, The Professional, Never seen it. Lucy, Never seen it. Anna. Never seen it. Never seen it. Okay. All right. I've seen The Professional, and I've seen The Fifth Element. Uh, that's about all. Never saw Lucy. All never right. saw. All right. So, for the, anyway, you're watching this French movie because you're so fancy. For, for, the, for, the, yeah. for the more cultured people in the audience. No, it's not even about that. It's a movie about a woman who gets knocked up by a car. So I wouldn't call it fancy. Oh, it sounds real fancy. It's just it's really, nice. you know, that's that just star-studded. It's a wild movie, is all I'm saying. Yeah, we have that in cinema. America. It's called Herbie the Love Bug. <laughs> we don't need your French version. Ooh la la la. We got Herbie. Lindsay Lohan got him fully loaded. And I'm talking about the old ones before Lindsay Lohan loaded him up with all her oh. coke. I didn't see the old ones. I only saw the reboots. I didn't see Herbie the Love Bug when I was a kid. I didn't care about that. A Volkswagen bug that's driving around? I don't care. Well, there was one where he was trying to finish a race, and uh, his wheels fell off. But don't worry. They got a wagon wheel. <laughs> finish that race. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny movie. All right. It's good stuff. Who's yeah. that guy that was in those movies? Uh, uh, Dean Jones? Ted Danson. Uh, it might, might have been Dean Jones. I don't, I don't remember. I was a little kid. Dean Cain. Well, yeah. No, not Dean Cain. No. Oh. Dean Jones was the Are you guy. sure? He was doing all those. Yeah, Dean Di- Jones. Yeah, yeah. He's doing yeah. all those those Disney movies in the '60s. He was doing like, um, God, what was the dog Jungle one? Book. No, 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 no. Oh. The live action. He was doing. Uh, oh, Dean Flubber. Jones was in. Was the... he Flubber? The original Flubber. I think that That's was Dean. That's Robin yeah. Williams. Like I said, the original. <laughs> <laughs> he came back and did the TV series too. Luke Besson is um, uh, rebooting Dracula, by the way, with Christoph Waltz. Mm. That'd be good. I'd watch that. I like him. So anyway, back to Titan that nobody's ever heard. No, of forget about it. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm wasting my your... breath on you Philistines. <laughs> well, there was maybe some. I'm just saying. Are also dorks. I'm saying, irrespective of the language, it's a wild movie about this woman that gets like knocked up by a car, and it's it's gross and bloody, and I love it. What about Ratatouille? Isn't that a French movie? No. No, it's a Pixar movie. It's a pretend French movie. Oh. <clears throat> Um, oh, yeah, Dan Fo- somebody mentioned The Offer. That's uh, Dan Fogler played Francis Ford Coppola. That's right. That's a great miniseries about the making of The Godfather called The Offer. It's over on Paramount+. Plus. That's very entertaining. You guys have never seen Amelie? No. Mm. Why, are you <laughs> Why are you so angry about it? Why are you so irritated? Just listen to that. I'm not talking so much to him because he didn't go to school and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking to you because you watch different kinds of movies. Yeah. Take it as a compliment that I think maybe you've French watched some movies. But take it why wouldn't you take it as a compliment that I thought maybe you'd seen some? I don't mind like 
if it's you really said I don't want to read my movies. If it's really like super high rated and it's got subtitles, like what, like Squid Game. I watch Squid Game with subtitles, right? But I'm not going out of my way to watch French cinema. I barely watch movies in America. Well, most of the French yeah. movies I watch are in that horror genre, though. And like, I also don't really trust your recommendations anymore. Remember, I, we've been over. I this. understand you're talking the about horror movie, movies. The last movie you recommended had a priest uh, sexually assaulting a, de- a demon until he spread his seed inside <laughs> Song the of demon Solomon vagina. Yes. Oh, so funny. Yeah, but that was like a r- terrible, bad, fun movie. So that's why I don't take you seriously. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Titan isn't a terrible movie. Well, a car I, that impregnates a woman. I mean, High Tension is a French movie, and that's awesome. That's High Tension's blood. great. Okay, um, that's about blood pressure. So that's <laughs> no, no, that's hypertension. That's oh, what you're thinking oh. of. No, oh, tension, hypertension. Uh, high. Now you got me saying it. <laughs> no, High Tension is like a modern classic horror film. It's just French. Martyrs is great. Okay, okay. I thought maybe. Somebody has seen it. All I'm saying is, for as much hate as you give Harry Potter adults, to follow that up one segment later with, is anyone watching this French movie? First of all, I don't hate anybody. I, I don't. You're giving hate. I don't. No, no, no. Shade. I'm. I don't understand Harry Potter adults. We don't understand French culture. That's why they s- translate it for you. Want the baguettes and the fries <laughs> and the frites. That's it. <sighs> okay, listen. I've uh, uh, got to take un break. And uh, I got tickets on the way back if you want to go see 21 Pilots. Lord knows enough people have been hitting me up about them. Uh, They're going to do the Romo Fijo end of September. So if you dig 21 Pilots, I will hand that next pair off after the break. Anything else, 35192 to text and listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Next week, all bets are on. The Buzzard Bookie returns with nine chances a day every weekday to win $1,000 on 100.7 WMMS. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Here's my Jersey Mike's radio idea. I'm a ninja warrior. By night, I walk unseen. By day, I'm at Jersey Mike's where they freshly slice my sub just for me. My blade is called Shadow. Theirs is called Meat Slicer. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. For a successful stint in the great outdoors, pack accordingly. Place heavy essentials near your spine for stability in rough terrain with light items near the bottom. Now, you may be wondering, where does the bush light go? In your stomach. Bush. Head for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch. Bush Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. The wait is over. The all-new state-of-the-art Spitzer Motor City Jeep Ram is here. We're celebrating our grand opening by giving you more selection. Now shop over 400 new vehicles and get more savings during the Jeep Celebration Event and Ram Truck Month with additional Spitzer discounts, additional factory incentives, and huge trade allowances that you won't find anywhere else. Swag more, spend less during the grand opening of the all-new Spitzer Motor City Jeep Ram. Cleveland's number one dealer. Our world revolves around you. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Experienced roofers are paid per hour, and benefits include pension, health, dental, and vision insurance. Trainee level pay starts at $22.90. Those with proven experience can qualify for $38.18 per hour. Positions are year-round and full-time. Candidates must possess a valid driver's license and complete a pre-employment drug screening. Join the A-Star team and become a union carpenter today. We are a safety-first and equal opportunity workplace. Apply today at ASTAR1.com or text JOBS.
going to go see 21 Pilots. They are getting ready to drop a new album called Clancy on the 17th of next month. And so they're bringing the Clancy tour to Cleveland. Aren't they from Columbus? Yeah. 21 Pilots. Just a few hours north at the Romo Fijo. It is Saturday, September the 28th, if you want to go see them. All the tickets, the info, or thing else at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Dot com. So car 10, these are yours. Two for 21 pilots. Good luck. Have fun. 216-578-1007. Or 800-348-1007. If you find yourself breathless with constant laughter, congratulations. Now could you tell us what show you're listening to? It sounds fun. This is the Alan Cox Show. <laughs> On 100.7 WMMS. Uh, 35192, want to send me a text. If you're watching live at alancockshow.com. Thanks again to Berber Dormonger for uh, assisting. And uh, the Cavaliers will play tonight here in MMS. We're down to the last three games of the regular season. Uh, first of those three against the Memphis Grizzlies, 7 o'clock tonight at the Romo Fijo. So we'll roll out at 6.30, get right into your pregame. Uh, if you're looking for the Guardians game, it is um, the next one against the White Sox. Uh, that will be tonight on WTAM 1100. So you can listen to Cavs basketball here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. If you listen to us on the app from out of state, tell me where. I'd like to know where people are. A lot of people suggesting that uh, both that car situation um, and the situation... Uh, from the murder cases, it'll be turned over to one Lindy Corn up there in Buffalo. Mm, there you go. I'll, I'll make a great commercial for her. A pre-med student knocked on the door and stabbed his mother 71 times. Sound familiar? <laughs> a neighbor <laughs> peed on and then humped his neighbor's Avalon. Sound familiar? <laughs> Uh, aggressive and not like a greeting. <laughs> not like a traditional oil change. <laughs> right. Well, people had jokes. 84,000 miles and its tubes are tied. List that car as well loved. Um, semen damage at the Agora this weekend. Again, I don't know that you're going to get semen damage, but I think. Even though the crux of that story, this guy who had been pleasuring himself on this woman's 2008 Toyota Avalon, um, the uh, the the premise of the story obviously is there's a crime there being committed. But the woman was so sweet because mm -hmm. she clearly didn't know what was going on. She's 84 years old. It wouldn't even occur to her that someone's doing something untoward with her vehicle. Uh, when the police uh, put up their cameras, she said that they took the film out and they got all of the information that they needed. She's just very, very sweet. She just wants to get to and from wherever she needs to go in her... So did he. Uh, 2008 Toyota Avalon. Just trying to get from A to B. Yeah. Um. Anyway, if you listen to us out of state, tell me where. Angela's in Nashville. Andy's in Atlanta. Mackenzie listens in Medford, Oregon. Oh. Uh, some recent additions to the Bureau Chief list. Adam listens in Elmore, Vermont. Zach's in Cape Coral, Florida. And um, we've got some new Canadian Bureau Chiefs in there, too, somewhere. Chelsea's in Peterborough, Ontario. Um, oh, speaking of Nashville. So we are talking about the Morgan Wallen thing, because Nashville now is party central. So... If somebody's not throwing chairs off a roof, that's when they have to deputize a celebrity to do it. It's really not his fault. Maybe he just got lured into a bachelorette party or something. But they're also making a whole lot of hay about this teacher who called in sick, and then they found out that she went to a country music show. And I'm not sure what the 
problem is with that because don't you get sick days? Do teachers not get sick days? Sick days? Unless she was out. Of, well, I mean, honestly, if you're calling off, you don't really have to give an answer. Well, that's what I'm reason. saying. Like, I, I don't know how it works with teachers. This is a teacher from up here, a town called Beckett Ridge, Ohio, which is a northern suburban Cincinnati. And uh, she called out sick. And they found out that she went all the way to Nashville with some friends to see a show. Now, they don't specify which show. And that would have been really helpful information. Even though Bill and I are not country fans, Mary is. And she could have mm-hmm. she could have really informed the conversation about whether or not that was worthy of taking a sick day. You know, if it's a Morgan Wallen show, again, I don't know one of these uh, hill rods from the next. But she knows the finer points. Uh, is a Luke Bryan show worth taking a sick day for? I mean, it depends on how much you like them. Like... Um, I took the day off to go see Fall Out Boy because it right. was in Columbus. So right. if she's going to if she's going to Nashville for someone that she's never seen before, or her friend gave her a free ticket, or whatever it might be. I mean, country music people that I would do that for. I'm going to see Kenny Chesney this summer. I'd probably do that for. Oh, I don't know. Would you do know. it for Kane Luke Brown? Combs. I would not do it for Kane Brown. Would Luke you do Combs it for Cody for. Johnson? No, he's not very good. Would you do it for Thomas Rhett? Thomas Rhett is huge. I wouldn't do it for Thomas Rhett, but I could see other people doing it for Thomas Rhett. Would you do it for Jason Aldean? No. Mr. Try That in a Small Town, like Beckett Ridge, Ohio. Would you do it for Tyler Childers? No. Luke Combs and... Cole Swindell. Cole Swindell's... Sounds like a NASCAR driver. Oh. He's got like two or three good songs. All right, sir. John Party. No, again, just a couple songs. (laughs) But you know all these people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, the Ohio teacher took a sick day and then lied about it, falsifying sick leave to travel. I'd be sick if I had to go watch a country concert. Well, she is, she's a female, so she (laughs) wants to go to this country concert. Right, but like, can't she say like that was... Well, that's what made her sick. Yeah, that's what made her sick. And like, do you have but to? But she sick preemptively you, took a sick. Do you have day? to do a, a be sick? You're just taking a day off, right? That's what. It, that was my question. Off. Yeah, like I know we have a lot of teachers in the audience. I don't know how that works. That you have to specify, or you have to, you know. I mean, uh, we have a whole system when we take days that right. we go into and we knock them we off have the calendar. Six, and we have sick days and we have vacation days. Yeah. But like, I mean, you're taking the day off. You you have days off. If you request it off, who cares? I mean, they're talking about firing this teacher. That's ridiculous. She told several colleagues that she had taken sick leave but was, in fact, going to this concert in Nashville. So what this tells me is this teacher's like, there's no other way I can get time off, and I really want to go see this show. Because now... um, And just say that the doctor prescribed her one night of country music (laughs) to help her bones feel good. Yeah. They said that this it was the Lord's prayer that she could feel better. They believe in all that crap, right? So they can just say it was it was I want you to pray on it. Yeah. Um and if you don't, I mean the guy on stage will tell you all about it, right? Drinking on Saturday, church on Sunday. All right, we have lest you forget. Karen said uh teachers cannot take sick days for concerts. We do have to give a reason. If they have personal days, they might use that if their contract says it can be used for anything. This is what I'm saying. The collective bargaining agreement. Okay, so that's they're getting her on. Hey, you violated your code of professional conduct or whatever. All right. Well, they're thinking about um, they may suspend her without pay, but they were thinking about. Go to another concert. (sighs) Screw it. Suspend me. Yeah, suspend without pay, though. Whatever. It's not cheap what to go to a concert gonna, these days. No, it's not. Yeah, but what, is she going to miss oh, three days and 100 bucks? I mean, it's not like she's raking in the dough as a teacher. She's not making much more money than I am. True. Yeah. She's also a school board member for the Loveland City School District in Loveland, Ohio. And, um... But, boy, there are some stories uh, that are uh, not even nearly as interesting as this one that have way more detail. So I'm curious why they didn't say who she went to go see. 
Maybe she's keeping her mouth shut at this when point. When was this? This was a couple of weeks ago. Unpaid leave and facing termination for calling in sick for two days to attend a concert in Nashville. Boy, must have been really good. Must have I'm been. Trying to look. Oh, Taylor Swift was there March fifteenth. Oh, February eighth and 9th. Oh, that's when she went. Yeah, falsified her sick leave on February eighth and 9th. Hey, Sandy. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. So with this sick time thing, if they give you sick time, they have every right to ask you where you what what was wrong with you. You were, you know, did you go to the hospital, yada, yada. But if it's vacation time or comp time, they don't have a right to know anything. And that's because the sick time is paid. Well, vacation well, your time vacation can be. And your, yeah. yeah, your vacation time and your comp time is usually paid, too. But they give you sick time. And I, I don't know how it, that actually all works. But that's the only time when I'm at work that I have to tell them what is wrong with me. Like, if I take a vacation day or a comp day, I just put it in for those days. If I call in sick, I have to put it in there, the reason for being sick. You're a teacher, right. Sandy. So, so you got to, like, say, no, like... No, I used to be a bus driver. Okay. But it, so if you so, miss school or miss your, uh, your shift as a bus driver for being sick, you had to be like, oh, I got crazy diarrhea, or they wouldn't... <laughs> like, or they'd be like, mm, Sandy's lying. Like yes. I've used. I actually did use that before for. for you, um, you have to at some point, yeah. But yeah, you have, to, you have to tell them why you're off sick. Mm -hmm. You can't just call up and say, "Hey, I'm not coming in today because I don't want to. I'm not coming in today because I have a migraine or I have cramps or you know whatever it is." They have every right to know the reason why you're not coming in if you're using your sick time. But can't you just say? Why? Can't no. you just say cramps? I mean, every woman could just say cramps, and that's the end of the conversation because People nobody wants. Don't really going to give time off for cramps. That's nobody wants thing, to though. touch that with a ten foot pole. Nobody wants to get sued. Absolutely right, but she used sick time and then went to a concert, yeah. and they found out about it. So she was she was abusing her sick time. That's the trouble, and abusing country music, if you ask me. I bet. Uh, <laughs> sorry, thank you, Sandy. I bet whoever was up on stage. Doesn't cotton to that kind of attitude. The only concerts I can find for February 8th and 9th are not country. February 8th is Drake and Jake Cole. February 9th is Pantera. Yeah! <laughs> uh, at Bridgestone Arena. Both well, there's a lot of Pantera places. fans with Confederate flags. Maybe that counts. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe it was not a... It could, I mean, that's Bridgestone. That's like the biggest venue down there. Patti LaBelle was there in on Nashville. February 8th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, she'd have to be a huge Patti LaBelle fan. <laughs> Where are my Which... backup singers? <laughs> they don't go anywhere. Where are my with backup her? teachers? <laughs> hey, Jim. Hello, Jim. Yeah, I'm here. Hold on. Yes, I'm here. What's up? Yeah, not much. I was just gonna. I'm a teacher. I was gonna clarify the sick leave and the oh, personal leave. Oh, good for uh, you. Yeah, go go you, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, teachers, they get like a day and a quarter a month. So they're allowed to get 15 of them a year. A day and a quarter? What the hell is a leave? day and a quarter? You can come in late one day. <laughs> well, I don't know. They, oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it accumulates a day and a quarter, and then you get 15 sick days a year. And there's a lot of teachers that abuse it. So, you know, a lot of times they don't, uh, you know, you're, if you're sick, you don't have to tell them, you know, why you're sick. But usually the golden rule is if you're sick, you shouldn't be seen out in public unless you're going to the doctor. Sure. Um, she should have worn a disguise. Are you a are, Jim? Are you a current teacher or a retired teacher? A uh, current teacher. And what do you teach? So, uh, I teach at a vocational school, so I teach uh, uh, ninth and tenth graders. So yeah, okay. Uh, it's sort of a different situation than a normal yep. um, vocational school. But before that, I taught twenty six years at a regular high school. Um, used to teach industrial arts. Oh, you so, did really? Okay. And, uh, and all that. Yep. Oh, and so this kind then, this kind of thing happens? is all is all part of whatever the teacher's contract is then. Yeah. Well, yep. Whatever the contract is. So, uh, but every school district you get a day and a quarter a month, and then it adds up to fifteen a year, and then you get three personal days. The personal days sometimes, um, like where I work, you don't have to tell them what you're doing with your personal days. 
Um, so they're, but sometimes you have to tell them what you're doing for your personal days. Is industrial and arts the fancy happened, name for shop teacher? Yeah, shop teacher. Shop yep. teacher. Okay. When I was in school, it was shop teach, shop class. Now it's industrial arts. Yeah, it's the, yeah well, industrial technology, they call it now. Gotcha. Um, but a lot of the schools got rid of it already, so a lot of schools don't have it anymore. Um, Too many people losing they, thumbs? They go to a vocational school. No, not losing, <laughs> losing thumbs. I, all of the years I taught it, I never had anybody lose a finger or a dip, So Well, that's because you're a good um, teacher, Jim. A lot Jim. of stupid things go on. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I would like to think so, but safety really stress safety a lot. Safety um, first. In the industrial technology, industrial arts field. Right. Okay, um, good. So, but what happens, what yes. gets these teachers... That, you know, they're not smart enough. I mean, I don't know. Teachers are a rare breed where they want the kids to be attentive and that, but they do stupid things all the time where, you know, I know at one place where I worked, the teacher was out at some kind of thing buying purses and they post it to um, social media. And then what happens if the district don't catch you, then people turn you into the, the state of Ohio has like a division of teacher like conduct. Bitches where people oh, turn everybody in and they research it and catch teachers doing stupid things. Oh, a bunch of looky-loos and negative Nellies mm-hmm. out there. bunch of snitches. Nobody can have fun anymore. Holy cannoli. All right, listen, thank you, Jim. Yeah, I appreciate uh, uh, yeah. uh Indeed they did. Thank you. There's Jim out in Lorain County. I got a letter from Scott, who was the guy who did the pound cake poem. Yeah. A very great. heartfelt pound great. cake poem. And he's been playing around with AI. And he goes, I sent an Alan Cox show song (laughs) that I made on this AI website, right? See, if this is what AI is going to be, at least in the short term, I know everybody's freaking out about AI. Whatever your thoughts on it are, it will eventually do something terrible and awful to all of us, of course. But for now, when we're in the initial entertainment phase of it, give me all you got. And then give me some more. In the city of Cleveland on a sunny afternoon, there's a radio show that's got a lively tune with laughter and banter and jokes so clever. They light up the airwaves and go on forever. It's the Alan Cox Show. Oh, what a delight. A crew of misfits keeping tight with Alan on the mic and his voice so smooth He's got the style of a true crooner, it's true Oh, the Alan Cox Show It's the place to be, place to be. Where the laughter's contagious and the fun is free, <laughs> free. Really and caught the spirit of the program too, right? Every single yeah. way. So tune in every day Cause they're here to stay How about that? I don't know what I don't know what keywords he put in. I have no idea what he put in. Fun, crooner. fun, yup. Mm-hmm. Crooner, you know how I like a good croon. Mm-hmm. And crone. A cr- no, I don't. I don't like a crone. Oh, oh, my bad. No, I want the old crones to stay away from me. No disrespect to people who have Crohn's disease. So I took it upon myself to create a couple of Alan Cox show songs from this AI program. I made a Mary Santora song. All right. And I made a Bill Squire song. Ooh. You want to hear Mary's song or your song yeah. first? Whatever. Um, ladies first. Mary's is called Double Lunch and Goodwill Finds. Yes. In a small New York town, Mary's <laughs> on her grind. She's a comedian, make folks laugh all the time. From open mics to late night show, she's got the skill. But when the day's done, she's got her own hillbilly thrill. <laughs> hillbilly thrill. Little town Mary ain't like the rest. She grabs a double portion. She's always blessed. She stacks the plate high with comfort food. So fine, here rock country music playing. It's her kind of dime. Oh. Double lunch and goodwill. Double lunch and goodwill fine. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what. That rules. So I, I don't know so if we can follow that. <laughs> I, I, I just put in a few keywords right. and uh, it did its thing.
That is so good. Double lunch and goodwill <laughs> finds, mm-hmm. right? Perfect. I love it. Couldn't Bill's song is boobs, trains, and high end coffee. Oh, there you mm-hmm. go. Right? That's a good trifecta That's all right. for your song. Yeah. Let me tell you about a man I know He's got a taste for things that make him glow He's not your average guitar strumming guy He likes his coffee strong and his trains flying by He's got a collection of curves that he adores Boobs that he can't have but he's Don't underestimate his love for steam His love for steam The style that you put I, in. D- I, I didn't. Trains. Boobs, trains, and coffee. Boobs, trains, and coffee. Yep. His heart's on fire. Yep. I didn't put a style no. in. I just put some keywords in. Yeah. Boobs, trains, and high-end coffee. <laughs> your heart's on fire. It's what the AI thought. Yeah, I thought your heart was on fire. Don't underestimate his love for steam. <laughs> He's got I a collection. Mary, like, he adores Mary boobs songs. that he can't help but explore. I like it, but Mary's song is incredible. Yeah, because Mary. I think if you, um, I, it must have defaulted to country because I didn't. Hillbilly. I wrote the word hill. I wrote hill rod in there. Yeah. yeah. Hill rod or yeah, goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Double lunch and goodwill finds. It was, I mean, it was my entire life. But again, how easy is it, right, for these programs to mimic existing things? And it's just, you throw in a couple of keywords and it cranks out this massive thing. So anyway, uh, thank you to Scott for the initial one for you. No, I don't. Quarter bagels and French (laughs) films? No, I did not. I'm going to take a break here. I will have Eric Andre tickets for you. He is doing a show at the Agora. Um, in June, the 15th, the Eric Andre show. What that will look like, who knows, but it should be wild. So I'll have those tickets for you. If you're a fan of his, I'll hook you up coming back. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Or whatever smart device you have. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. From the Mr. Hero. I crave the hero. Weather Center. WMMS Weather. Tonight, rain down to 55. Tomorrow, rain, thunderstorms, high 68. Friday, rain and a possible thunderstorm with a high of 51. This report is sponsored by It's Just Lunch. And the forecast for your dating life is warm and sunny because you're about to join It's Just Lunch and meet other busy professionals like you. Call them at 216-328-9026 or visit itsjustlunchcleveland.com today. It's Just Lunch. Connection awaits with guaranteed dates. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive.
Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. Time to give stuff away. Time to give stuff away. All right, comedian Eric Andre is coming to Cleveland. The Eric Andre Show, live, Saturday, June 15th at the Agora. You can always go to agoracleveland.com to get details on any and all shows coming through. Tickets, all that. A car 10, you get this pair. Eric Andre, live. I don't know what form that will take, but we'll see. Car 10, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Just consider us your earbuds. Jesus, who writes this crap? The, the Alan Cox Show. On WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send me a text? AlanCoxShow.com. Want to watch? Tom Green going to be in here tomorrow. I think all his shows are sold out, by the way. So maybe he's just coming in to chat. But we haven't had Tom Green in here in uh, quite a while. Friday, our friend Don Jameson is back in town, so he'll join us um, early in the show. I think he's doing the funny stop in he Cuyahoga is. Falls uh, this weekend. So Tom Green tomorrow, Don Jameson on Friday. And then we will uh, launch ourselves into the weekend. Next week on the show, I want to go see Social D. Mike Ness and Social Distortion are doing two nights at the House of Blues. They're doing the 28th and 29th of September. So if you're not going to that 21 Pilots show at the Romo Fijo, you can go see Social D. Black Keys are playing the Romo Fijo in October. I'll have those tickets for you. If you want to go to incarceration out at the Ohio State Reformatory, uh, if you listen to Two Hours to Midnight, if that's your vibe, hard and heavy and fast and loud, incarceration, uh, Godsmack, Breaking Benjamin, Chevelle, Bad Omens, and then An Evening with Alan Ruck, The Pride of Parma Heights, Cameron Fry from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or more recently... Uh, Connor Roy on the show Succession. He was great in that. But he's kind of doing a spoken word thing. So an evening with Alan Ruck is May the 3rd at the Agora. That's only a couple of weeks away, as a matter of fact. And I will have tickets for you for that all week. And what else? Well, if you're into King Crimson, if you go way back with King Crimson, they're doing a tour called Beat where there are uh, four guys from different bands, kind of a super group, and they're doing King Crimson. So Adrian Ballou and Steve Vai and Tony Levin and Danny Carey, who drums for Tool. That should be a wild show. I think that is completely sold out. So I will have those tickets for you. They're doing uh, end of October at the Agora. So that's next week. What about any of us on the show? Anything coming up for any of us? I'm glad you asked, Bill. Will it be? <laughs> Will it be April 27th? Now you're asking and answering your own questions? Well, somebody's got to. Somebody's got to ask the questions. Someone's got to answer the questions. Sometimes it's got to be me. Oh, what do you have coming up? Garage Bar, Will it be? Oh. April 27th. Yeah. Tickets at BillSquire.com mm-hmm. or BillIsReal.com. Mm-hmm. It goes the same way. Why website. do you have two websites? Because I have magnets that say Bill is Real and it's easier to remember if I just say, if you go to billisreal.com, when I'm selling them in, like... Why do you sell the Bill Columbus? is Real magnets at billsquire.com? I mean, I could, but I usually just sell them at the shows. Do the two websites have the same information? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. It just, billisreal.com just forwards to... To billsquire.com. billsquire.com. It's gotcha. Just, it's, it's one of those things where if they have the magnet, it doesn't have my last name on it, but they'll go, oh, Bill is Real. Dot com. Gotcha. They'll end up at my website. They're not two distinct websites with. Right. Okay. Um, that guy Scott did send me a, a, an AI song for Ghost Bag, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's not. He might be hanging out. I have a feeling he'll be hanging out. Anyway, who's he going to talk to? He'll talk to somebody. I don't know. Who should he talk to? Uh, Bill likes boobs. All right. I think Mary. I think he should talk to Mary. Mary's more. Private about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't about her boobs. So it's funnier. About, no, I don't like talking about sex. I'm working on a bit right now about how uncomfortable I am talking about sex, and it's so awkward on stage. 
because I'm so uncomfortable. Because you're literally talking about sex. Yes. Listen, I am not a fappy fappy or whatever you called it with pound cake. Squeaky squeaky. Squeaky squeaky. Yeah. Hey, where that dude go, by the way? I don't know. I wasn't here. I was on vacation. I came home. He was gone. You weren't here. No. Oh, that's cold, man. I know. That's cold. Left in the middle of the night. You skip out when this dude's pouring out his heart to everybody. Apparently. Telling people, hey, I can't. I, I gotta go. <laughs> I assume it sounded like that. And you skipped town, man. I already was out of town. He chose to leave while I was out of town. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Feels pointed. Wow, now you're just sticking it in there. All right, so you can't talk about sex on stage. I don't really like talking about it in general. Oh, why? You must be fun in the sack. It's different one on one than it is with a. Time. It's different one on one than it is with a giant platform. So there's no pillow talk afterwards. There's plenty of pillow talk. That's one on one. It's when about, there's all these what about ghosts. One or more? No. Do you count? Uh, no, I mean like one or more people. Oh, no. You know what they say? Sex between two consenting adults is a beautiful thing. Between three or four, it's amazing. <laughs> all right, I'll write that down. Yeah, you can go away, ghost bag. I think you're done. <laughs> I'm sad, man. I'm sad of a bitch now. I'm never going away. You can... Eh. Shut up, man. The power of Christ compels you. Shut up, man. <laughs> Lurking in the night. It's like a real Enya vibe on this yeah, thing. This yeah, this is creepy. This is terrible. It's great. What are you talking about? It's too 80s for Mary. Like uncomfortable. Uh, You don't even like talking about sex. No, I do not. Is it because you're bad at sex? No, not at all. How would she know she's bad at sex? Good point. Well, people tell you when you're good. They never tell you. Yeah, of course. They tell you when you're good. Guys just want to get laid again. That's as good as the ghost bag song. A little Enya? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're doing a whole bit about how you don't like talking about sex. I know. Just about how sexual situations make me, like, in public or when people are super open, like, just talk about sex with anybody, that makes me really uncomfortable. Does this, um, because I have to imagine that you have people in your own family who are much more forthcoming about that kind of stuff. Yeah, my sister. Right, that's what I'm saying. Fans. Right, she, she has the only fans. Just the things that she just says out loud and the words, her word choice in casual conversation. I'm like, dude, is that something out. is that something that you have no interest in or you are on a journey of liberation at some point? It To me, it feels inappropriate. Really? And I get it. Like, you're well, it might adult. be. You're an adult. Say whatever you want if that's who you are. But it's not I'm not even saying just her, like the amount of comics who talk about like just so in such vulgar detail the sex i i get physically uncomfortable listening to really dirty comedy like that you're talking about on stage yes like yeah. i've never enjoyed like jim norton i understand but like, it is a, it, it but but 
But obviously you understand where it comes from. I mean, it's a universal thing. Sure, but it makes me uncomfortable. I got you. And so I'm trying to explore that on stage. Does it also make you a little bit horny and that's why you're uncomfortable? <laughs> no. Not at all. Uh, well, that's very feel, that's like, interesting. Invasive. Like I shouldn't know these things about you. I these see. are not things that we're not close. You're not I'm not going to be doing these things with you. But you're also assuming no that they're telling the truth. This. Well, I'm yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it's exaggerated and it's heightened for comedic purposes. They might, sure. you know, they might be making it up out of whole cloth. Or even people who on like podcasts or people who are just like my sister, comfortable talking about those kinds of things just openly at, at lunch. I'm like, this is not the place. Well, give I'm me an example. I mean, is your sister, is this in I, mixed company? Are there to say Well, are the there, radio. Are, are there, well, no, I mean, you'd censor yourself, but I mean, the subject matter. Are there children around? What's the no, inappropriate part? She's your even. sister. She's sure, but when you're sitting there and we're ordering salads and you're referring to your, your pee, like the P word. Yeah. My pee does this. Your hoo-ha. And I'm like, whoa, like, dude, we're in a restaurant. Like, you don't want me screaming that word around. But she's not saying it to the waiter. But we are in a public place. Oh, and she's and saying, saying she's it at a volume that other people could hear. How men on her OnlyFans talk about whatever and using the same language that they would use. And I'm like, bro, lower your voice. She's trying okay, to get so people to subscribe to her OnlyFans. She's got to talk it. at a, at a higher volume so uh, so people nearby can eavesdrop and hear. Being at a like diner that. and talking about that at high volume is a little uh i could see why that would make you uncomfortable but just if you guys were at like a bar and it's loud and people aren't really paying attention would that still make you uncomfortable yes i don't like that word well I here's don't the like thing the p word for vagina i understand I don't uh, like that at all there's also a difference between being inappropriate publicly and making it making you uncomfortable Wait, what? those are there's a p word for the vagina mhm penis bill see me after the show <laughs> oh. <laughs> poo nanny bill oh, it's there you poo go. nanny <laughs> No, I don't like that word. Which one do you like, prefer? In Hoo-ha. the bedroom while it's going on. Kitty cat. Sure, go ahead and use it. But All like right. when you're, I prefer you to use the word vagina. Ah, but not with your boyfriend. No, right. like I said, one on one is different. Right. But also, I don't think we should be talking about that kind of stuff in public at all. I don't think that that is a public forum conversation. Why not? Like when people get really into sexual detail in public, it makes me. So uncomfortable. Well, in mixed company or on stage or even when Bill tells and Bill and Cody would tell some of their stories, I'm like, I I don't like hearing about this. I don't want that's to picture fair. people that I know doing those things. That is weird to me. Huh. Because I think that's the only reason you would talk about something in such detail if you want people to picture you doing it. So in mixed company, you only want the genitals referred to as the vagine. I would prefer if you didn't refer to your genitals at all. How about furry company. cup? No. Spam cabinet? Can you not? <laughs> Werewolf of the throat cut? I hate this. Sugared almond? Yeah, that one. Wander down under? This is the worst. Oyster ditch? I'd quit. Twisted slipper? I'm walking out. <laughs> Flappy meal? Better. Oh. Shame envelope? Stop. <laughs> where, where are you getting this list? So wait, when you- Just off the top of my head. You like- Hippos yawn. When, when people talk about stuff, you like visualize it as they're talking about it? 100%. Oh, I don't do that. Because that's no, I don't do that either. In, yeah. When they're talking in detail about a sexual experience, how are you not? How do you not visualize that? Because how do you we not all have what they're saying. Because there's only two kinds of junk. Fifty uh, percent of the people have already checked out. So right. who no, no, cares? No, that's not what I'm saying. Like if you think okay. if you were to talk about this on stage, everybody in the audience would be picturing you naked 1, and having sex. Percent. They would not. Yes, they would. Some would, but that's you know law of average. Yeah, I don't really. Because that what, I don't what really else do is that. the point? What else is the point in being so descriptive about sex unless you want people to picture you doing it? Because it You're can trying be interesting to tell a story. or funny or whatever. Oh, okay. I, I, I have you, sex I jokes. Can... I don't think people, I don't do them because like, I want people to be picturing me do this. I, I, well, that's what happens. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, how's everybody like my, let me tell you this story about when uh, I was getting down with my lady the other night and... Um, now, I'm going to need all of you to picture me slowly taking my pants off. Not even that. It's just like, I don't know. My sister posted a picture on her Instagram the other day, and she had her pants hiked so far up, her camel toe was ridiculous. She's trying to sell OnlyFans subscriptions. I know that. I She's said, trying hey, to man. monetize her vagina. I don't I believe like, you. Please don't 
you got to check this. Buy high-waisted pants if this is what you want. And she goes, no, men love this. I want them thinking about my pee. Yes, because she's monetizing it. I understand, but that is uncomfortable to me. Understood. That's all I'm saying is that the whole basis of, of me trying to talk about this on stage is that I am so physically uncomfortable with people talking about sex. So why is this a hunk of material? Uncomfortable. Because I, I thought it was an interesting point. I'm, I'm assuming this that should be a hunk be, of therapy. No, I'm assuming that there's got to be other people. Like, okay, the joke yeah, that grandmas. I do is about me I, I, being like a grandma. That's ex- the exact analogy I use is that, like, me walking through a female strip club is the same way that a old woman walks through an antique store. And I, like, put my hands behind my back and I just kind of, like, nod and look around. And I'm like, oh, that one, I wonder how old that one is. You know, like, don't, <laughs> yeah. that one looks expensive. Don't yeah. touch it, you know? Yeah. And that's the idea is that I do when it comes to talking about sex. In mixed company, in public, I turn into a ninety-five. Okay, woman. that's a good premise. I mean, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. I mean, oh, I didn't. As it's um, I, I get guess I really uncomfortable. I mean, we've talked about this before, it not in great detail, but I guess I didn't realize that you think everyone's picturing you doing what you're talking yes. about. If you because tell, I do that. When, but if you, whenever anybody on this show has talked about sex or a sexual experience, it's like a movie starts playing in my head, and I don't know if that's because. I like to read books. Is that so only a, for sex? I mean, no, if I it's if any I kind of a story. So if somebody here talks about running a marathon, you're picturing, I'm picturing me running. Them running, yeah. And what huh. you would look like running, and what you you were wearing, and how silly it would be if you had a sweatband on your head. You don't or, have to imagine it. I look frigging great. What kind of shoes you have on? Like when people tell stories, I assume it's to paint a picture in someone's head. If you're telling a good story. People but, but should that's be just, able to imagine right, what you're but, telling. But okay. the way that you imagine things is different. Other people's brains don't work with pictures. Well, like I don't know how other people's time. brains well, no, work. They're, I they're, just didn't know that hers did that. There's there's different p- people have more of a verbal monologue, and some people have more uh, like photographic type monologue or like visual visual I monologue. Think, like, I honestly or think or it's the same. Visual thought process. I don't. Mine is not very visual. When I'm hearing a story, I'm I'm processing the words and, and thinking about that. I'm not visualizing them in the situation. It's also the reason I think I don't like it when you guys joke and make references to how much you poop all the time is because I'm thinking about you sitting on the toilet pooping. Oh no, we want or you to do looking, that. We I specifically it. do it to touch. T- That's why it bothers Yeah, we want so you to much. do that. <laughs> it's gross. You're lucky I'm just holding back so much right now because I'm just going to say you, something. I'm, you think I'm, that I, you just bother me because you annoy me. Half of it's because you tell gross stories and I'm like, I don't want to it. think about you in these situations. I do not want to picture Bill Squire doing the things that you describe. Or when you grab Cody. it, you'll feel how firm it is. Yes, and like the stories <laughs> Cody would tell, I'm like, I don't want this image in my head. And when, when you, you like to sniff my things, testicles, that that right there. How do you not picture that? I'm not thinking about not his picture, balls. Well, he's talking about them. How do you not picture a woman? When you girl like to sniff my to, testicles, yes, I think of a woman's face next to a set of testicles. <laughs> That's exactly what my brain puts that image there. That's amazing. Well, then that must be kind of a prison for you. Yes. Wow. Oh, think about all the things I that guys do in prison. I think it's why I've gravitated. I'm not even kidding. I think it's why I've, I've gravitated toward clean comedy. Not for my, I mean, I'm not a dirty comic at all, but like toward cleaner storytellers because I like the pictures that they paint and it doesn't gross me out. They don't talk about things that make me feel uncomfortable. Like Kyle Kinane painting a picture of him being on his last album, being stranded in well, the then desert how do you, with a van. You must have to avoid a lot of comedy all the time. But then, boy, There's that's so much comedy not that I can that I hate. Or if someone starts to get dirty, I just walk out of the room. No wonder you're irritated. I just, I just, that's how my brain works. When people start describing situations, so one on one, you're fine. You're like, picture you're with Brian. You're at the box doctor. Doesn't it's all good, me. right? No. It's clinical. Well, and when I'm with Brian, a lot of that talk is either leading up to or during sex. But so what do you think it. those guys who buy your feet pics are doing? I, I know what they're doing, but we're not talking about it. Oh, it's verbal. I see. There is no. There is no. If somebody wrote you, pic, there's nothing like that. Somebody wrote you an email and said, "Mary, I just bought five hundred dollars worth of your feet pics, and let me tell you what I'm doing right now." I would turn the. I would shut the email off and delete it. But that's not verbal. It's written. But I'm still picturing it. My huh. brain turns that into images. Hmm. I cannot be the only person who does that. When you guys hear someone telling a story, 
you don't picture the things that they're saying. Well, like I said, they it's say, more of a monologue. I was walking down the street and the trees were blooming and the birds were singing and it was a bright sunny day. You're not picturing a street with trees and sun and birds? I guess it's yeah, not but it's, I guess it's not me out. It's not as forward as yeah. you're putting like it. I mean in my talking, brain I'm like, yeah, okay, but if someone's talking about sex stuff, I'm not grossed out by it because I don't find that stuff icky. In any it's way. not that I find it icky. It's that I don't want to picture you doing it. But I'm not, what I'm saying is like I'm not icked out by picturing people do things. And I think that is creepy. If you're not grossed out by by the image of your friends having sex, that is creepy to me. That means huh. you want to see them have sex. I mean, I know my parents well, had sex sex because I'm here. Um and I know that they had sex all the time because the door was always closed and they were, you know, rustling around. But I don't know that I ever pictured my parents having sex. It's, again, it's not really that much of a picture. It's not like I, it, again, I don't visualize things like that. Some it's, people it's think it's in more, pictures. Yeah. Mary's she, one of those people. Mary thinks in pictures. I don't really think in pictures. So it's not as, like, I'm, I'm much more When you're auditory. writing your jokes, you aren't thinking of how people are going to visualize this joke? Not at all. No, Never, you want it to be not, funny. You want to laugh. Once. You do want it to be funny, but you also want them to see what you're explaining. I want no, you to be I able to see this situation. I don't. I, I've never thought of it that way. I think. I th- I think we're talking about the same thing. Everybody, the more detail you have, the more you can paint the picture for that person. Yeah. But a lot of people are not thinking in the picture. They're not adding to the portrait as you're telling the story. Oh. They're kind of fleshing They're it out. Listening and, and, when I'm listening to a story, I'm watching a movie in my head no. huh. of the person telling the story. I'm not. But you don't want to read your movies. So why are there so many books on your shelf, Mary? Dude, that, that sentence doesn't even make I'm any sense. I'm just watching, like, especially with stand-up. If someone's telling a story, I'm just watching them. And, yeah, there's, like, imagination happening, but it's not – that visual it's just okay so when tommy is telling tommy on your podcast who is very attractive and i'm sure she's told some pretty in-depth d- detailed stories about what she does for a living on mm. only fans you're not picturing that happening no i just go to only fans but that's my whole point <laughs> no is that I, it's like when my sister I, I, I is don't, telling me I a don't. story i'm like i don't want to hear this i don't need to picture your vagina and whatever you're doing with it well here's my yeah, question again I, the pictures aren't there well, my question is, I mean, your sister must know this about you, so why would she tell you those stories? Because that's who she is. What? Well, sometimes you got to be, I mean. You know I'm a sexual person. Oh, come on. Some people need to, like, calm down around other people. There's nothing wrong with going, hey, I know you don't like this, so I'm going to ease off the brakes. I don't know why everybody has to be 100% all the time. There's nothing wrong with, like, I'm talking about your sister. Truth. There's nothing wrong with like accommodating and another person. Let me say this though, too. It's not all the time. It's not like this comes up every time we have a conversation. No, I know. I mean, you but know. like while we were in Vegas, she's like, "Can you take some pictures for me?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And then <laughs> of she's my like, punani. Well, and then she's like, well, "I gotta. I need to do this part." And I'm like, "I, I tried. At one point, I tried to cover my <laughs> I eyes. I have to do this part. I had, tra- I had the oh. phone in my hand and I covered my eyes. She's like, "Mary." <laughs> Not gonna be oh. able to see what you're taking. But didn't you guys? And I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> Why does everybody have to live their truth to other people is, all the time? Is this something that became more prevalent since you've gotten sober? Because I feel like when you were like, you would talk about sending nudes to each other to like that you're gonna send to dudes. Okay, but not spread. Okay, well, right, you fair, know what I mean? Like enough, a picture of my enough, boobs yeah. or my butt in a thong is much different than the things that she's talking about yeah. on her page. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Now I'm picturing things. Jeez. Well, listen, I mean? there are not? there are people texting again, me who say they me... think in pictures like yeah. Mary does. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't think in the pictures and I don't like visualize stuff as people tell me the story. I'm just kind of listening and like, you know, there's a, there's a sort of reenactment, but it's not really all... It's more verbal than visual. I mean, for me, especially when it comes to sex, I'm like, the only reason you could possibly be telling the story is because you especially. want me to be picture you having sex. No, you I, want I, me to I've picture you even, doing this. Never hmm. even occurred no, to me. would not have occurred to me would, either. Yeah. Ever. Nope. But that's you. That's the only thing that comes to my mind. Hmm. Which is why I'm like, stop talking about this. Careful I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right, don't get your spam cabinet in a tizzy. I've got to take a break here. And um, if you want tickets for Josie Scott's saliva, now I want you to picture Josie Scott's saliva. 
like a dental bowl just filled with it. Uh, he's the, of uh, course, original frontman for that band, and now he's taking them back on the road. And I'll have those tickets for you on the way back. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Buzzard Radio. The Buzzard. He's Rover. <laughs> I gotta evacuate the studio. I'm not Good even night. kidding. Rock. And Alan Cox. Nobody uh, wanted to give Butley Forge <laughs> Knobber the time of day, but we did. You're up, I'm home of the Cavaliers. This is Cavaliers guard Karis Levert on 100.7 WMM.
teleport yourself back in time and explore the fascinating and harrowing story of Titanic's groups it's just it's not appropriate it's it's disgusting in a way it's uh 
No, I'm I'm uh, I'm with you on that. I think that people I think this notion that people should 100 percent be themselves or whatever the hell that means all the time is so like solipsistic and self-centered that it's gross. I get that. Mary, though, as a performer and being on stage, she's working through talking about something that she doesn't want to talk about. Well, in general, yeah. I'm saying right. on stage, off right. stage, I'm in the camp of, I don't know, it just seems like that's something that should be, you should talk about with people you want to have sex with. But and DT's point, have- I, I think we're talking about two different things here. DT is talking about talking about these things in public or mixed company being I inappropriate. Agree. You, but that you're talking about, you don't like talking about them because you're picturing people doing the stuff. Right. But I'm saying that even in if we're at a party and five of us are standing in a circle and someone starts telling a story about having sex, I'm either going to ex- I'm probably going to excuse myself from that circle because I don't want to picture that person having sex. Hmm. I don't want to hear about you having sex unless I want to sleep with you. I guess it's because like I know what sex is. So there's no new information to I know it's just where your brain goes, but I'm just saying uh, there will be no new information for me to glean from specifically picturing that person having sex. But that doesn't rub you one way or the other. Yeah! Like, this person is a friend of mine. I don't really no. want to picture them no, doing that. Bother. This nope. person is unattractive. I don't want to picture them doing that. I mean, Again, well, the, most people are unattractive. That's but what I mean. The, no, the I'm not thinking thing about doesn't them really sex. happen. Like, and it's just not. It doesn't bother me, and it's not inappropriate or what like i don't have any hang-ups on it whatsoever and it's just not it's not bothersome to me i mean listen i wouldn't want to be a private thing it's a thing that should be kept private there's nothing wrong with you and the person that you do that with or people i don't know whatever you're doing (laughs) nothing wrong that's fine if that's how you feel i just don't i don't i didn't know you were specifically picturing people having sex i'm saying it doesn't bother me and it doesn't you're telling me you do like when you told the story i'm talking about basketball when you t- yeah, like that could ever happen. When you told us the story you about know? you stopping in the parking garage and honking at the two women crying, I'm getting a very like clear image of two ladies crying and you honking your horn at them. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that's so rude. Like, uh, like, and that's it, it was rude. That- they were in my way. I think that's why I have you crying during daytime. You want to talk? You want to talk about doing Such something in private? Reaction. Step to the side, go inside, and cry at each other. There, you are in public here. It's not just sex that's inappropriate to do publicly. Get out of my way! You're crying in front of the entrance to the parking garage. I don't I know think, your situation. I didn't, I didn't mean to make you mad all over again. I'm You're not making that me that mad. Was- I'm that saying that's another... another point on the curve that has nothing to do with sex, but should also not be done publicly. Much more valid. That was another thing I was saying that I pictured that I could I could physically see you in your car with two ladies in front of them in front of the car hugging like it's like like I said like a movie. So because I picture all stories like that, yeah. I think that's why I get so uncomfortable when people talk about sex. The ladies start because kissing. When somebody that I don't particularly care to see naked or is a friend of mine or a relative of mine, I'm like, I don't want to hear anything about this because my mind's automatically going to start showing me what you look like. I guess my thought is, you know, and I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just speaking out loud. I'm, tr- I'm trying to process that whole situation. That's how you speak. I guess my thought is. <laughs> Did I say speaking? Speaking out loud. Thinking, out loud. Sorry. Speaking out loud. I'm thinking out loud. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just me speaking out loud, Bill. All right. Let me speak out loud. Um, is like, I'm not going to, I wouldn't think, uh, listen, if, if my brother was like, yeah, we were banging it out the other night, I'd be like, okay, I know what that is, but I wouldn't think of him doing it's it. It's not. Like, necessarily just mentioning it because like my friends and I have talked about sex or they're like oh my husband and I this that or the like I it's not even that it to me it's when people get into like oh graphic detail. depictions and the word I choices. See. And, like, the, the, it's not just like, oh, we were banging it out the other night and this and this and this happened. Oh, well, that's or a little was, daylight then in the there. It the best thing that I've ever felt. Like, it's not that. It's when people are, like, describing it. <sighs> when I'm like, this well, that's is unnecessary. the most inappropriate that, thing I've right. ever heard. That's somebody trying to get under your skin. Not just me. I don't, I don't understand the mentality of that, where people are fully comfortable having conversations like that in a group of people. You're in a room. And you're just having that conversation. I mean, I've never, uh, over the course of my life, 
I have never had like I don't have like a group of bros, right? So I was never like the you guy. You and Mike Nolan and Chris Ty weren't talking about all the time. You guys? No, not no, <laughs> no, we weren't. Slam some poon. No, <laughs> we were day. not. No, nope. yeah, some war stories. No, back- no, we were all talking shop. I found a couple of dudes who like you know understood where I was coming from. I've been called prude so many times in my life, and I'm like, I'm not prude when it comes down to. Well, because people are texting that, sex, and I was like, I'm, this. I don't really think I'm of it as prude. a prude thing. When it comes to doing stuff with one other person, I am not prude by any means. And like I said, all the talk and everything that you would say to me one on one in the bedroom is meant for that space. I don't think that that's prude because I don't want to hear about it from someone. No, it's boundaries. There's actually nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's yeah. you you've got some boundaries and you don't want that. And also, it's just I'm, it's different for other people. Whereas I've, like I'm not worried about that, but you are, and that's fine. I've never made a big deal about it. When stuff like that starts to get up, I might make like a comment and be like, gross, and walk yeah. away. Like 99% of the time, I'll just be like, I don't want to listen to this, shame and I'll walk away. Constantly. Shame you about it? I've Lots never even said anything other the- than ew, or Bill, or with Cody. <laughs> like, that's always yeah, she, my reaction. She doesn't want to bring it up. Because I don't want to talk about it. When right. you guys tell your stories, I'm like, oh, my God. Here we go. Alan, Bill, Mary... I just want to say, Alan and Bill, I feel like you two are in the vast minority on this because I'm always doing exactly what Mary says. And as you guys were talking about envisioning a story someone's telling, I was envisioning you guys talking about it. So just watch the live stream. But yeah, everybody does this. (laughs) We're providing the pictures already. So if you're talking to a really hot guy who's giving a graphic description, you don't want any part of that either. It's got nothing to do with whether or not they're visually unpleasant. Not necessarily in public because, like, that type of porn appeals to me. Like the J-O-I stuff. I I, I thought just a guy telling a story. (laughs) Yeah, just men talking. Tales of ribaldry. (laughs) This is really hypocritical. She hates when men talk. She hates when a man explains something to her, but now she's just listened to a man tell a story and jack into it. No, but I'm saying that, like, in public, regardless of how attractive you are or not, because I've worked with, um, what was his name? Colin Kane, who is super attractive, but absolutely filthy. And I was so uncomfortable being in the room while he was talking about things that I had to leave because I'm like, it doesn't matter how hot you are. This feels so inappropriate. He's also not very funny. Hmm. But I mean, there's lots of people who aren't funny who talk about gross stuff. Yeah, and that's but not, I'm not, even, so, not even just now. If it is, if it is funny, like, is there a threshold where you're like, this is so funny, I I can kind of enjoy it? I have yet to find that where someone is super super dirty, but they're so funny because I don't think that I can put those on the same. Well, level. not only that, but. There's been no stone unturned with the sex comedy stuff, right? There's nobody doing anything new with that kind of material. It's usually just. <laughs> I got a name for you, Dan Alton, because boy. <laughs> you, you're just, you know what? But you're talking about stuff that, like, to get people feeling uncomfortable, and from that, they might laugh. And this isn't um, gender wise either, because, like, people, I mentioned, like, Jim Norton, but people bring up Nikki Glazer all the time, and they're like, she's yeah. super dirty, but so funny. And I'm like, I can't even see it as funny because it makes me so uncomfortable. So that's why I've never gravitated. Even even like, um, who's the Australian Jim? Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. He's not necessarily sexual, but he's so vulgar that I'm like, I can't listen to this. This is not funny to me because I'm so uncomfortable with the language that you're using. Wait, like the no words? wonder you le- love Brian Regan. I love Brian Re- like and the, Jim Gaffigan. My favorite comics, Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan, Nate Bargatze, Kyle Kinane, um... Uh, Kathleen Madigan, like all the comics that I love. You and like look a up to. you like a pure joke comedy. Yes, I want it to be silly and irreverent and funny right. and was silly and like I already said silly twice, but like that's what like I Tim like. Tim Robinson, he's super silly. I hate him. <laughs> he yells too much and it's not funny at all. And he likes sloppy steaks. But yeah, vulgarity and like any kind of a sexual content or even yeah, just I don't really like vulgar conversations in general. Well, for a while though. Kind of to that point, vulgarity kind of had its lane. And now it's everywhere because everybody has an outlet for it. So people who are made uncomfortable by that kind of stuff, it's like you almost can't get away from it. And vulgarity yeah. takes different forms. It doesn't yeah. have to be 
uh, it doesn't have to be salacious or sexual, right? No. There's a violent vulgarity. There's mm-hmm. like the way people talk to each other or treat uh, each other, you know. Th- that's all kind of part of that. But hey. I also don't like gross things. Like when we talk about, you know, pimples being popped and you guys show me those nasty videos. Like that's vulgar and repulsive to me in the same way. Well, yeah, that's why we were doing like Make Mary Puke or whatever. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why Mary, uh, Mary reacts because you react so viscerally that it's funny. It. <laughs> right. That's why Mary doesn't like 2,240 pounds, Bill. I don't know what that is. That's a gross ton. Oh, my God. Hey, Duke. Oh, here we go. What a setup. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Well, I got to follow that opening. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you, it's board meeting night here at the Dover Gardens, and uh, one of my buddies is an attorney, and he's got a wealthy guy who collects art. And he called him, he said, Marty, he said, I got good news and bad news. And my the art collector said, well, I've had a terrible day. Let's hear the good news first. He says, well, I met with your wife today. She said she invested 5000 bucks. And two pictures she thinks can bring like fifteen million. And I think she could be right. The guy said, That's great. So my wife's a brilliant businesswoman. You made my day, that's great. Well, what's the bad news? He says, Well, it's pictures of you with your secretary. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, well, give my love to the staff of the Dover Gardens. I love that spot. I'm still living today. Oh, thank you. There's uh, like a Duke. Bay Village millionaire sex club. Uh, no, that's the bar where the guy ran his pickup truck into it. And, like people got hurt in there a few oh. years back. But I love the Dover Gardens. I liked it before and after there was a pickup truck in the front bar. I got a break here, <laughs> but I think we've all learned something new. I was gonna say about each other, not really, but about Mary. And isn't that the point of I all of I'm this? I'm just surprised that not not that not everybody listens. No, there's like a lot that, of people on your side. But that that is, I mean, I I think of that's the point of telling any story, any story that you're telling. You want people to imagine that they right, were there. But but the thing is, the way your brain imagines it's different than the way my brain imagines. It. Yeah, I think for I uh, think for, that means your brain isn't imagining it. No, no, no. Your brain no, is listening, but you're not imagining it. You're listening. No, no, it, there's people that have more visual brains and more auditory brains, and I'm, I'm more auditory. I can't imagine listening to a story and just looking at the person's face and just listening to them talk. Like, okay, that well then. That is a crazy concept. Well, okay, well then. Just listening and, like, paying attention? No, well, no, no, because I'm paying attention while yeah. I'm listening, but but just looking at them yeah. with no other pictures going on in my head, that's that's an insane No, concept. I'll even give you that. I'm just saying it but it's an it's, it's another it's another step to be grossed out and need to leave the room by it. Cuz I can't turn the pictures off. Well, I can't do I can't. When you start describing things, I cannot make my brain not see it. Yeah. Like, I wish I could just look at you and be like, oh, the, watch the way his mouth is moving. That's crazy. Once again, Bill dunking a basketball. I, I'm telling you, I picture it. I picture I, your I'm, body trying to get up there. In not trying, head, doing it. <laughs> in my head, there's a trampoline underneath you, and I apologize. What, <laughs> that's, that's baby okay. steps. I'm just going to eventually <laughs> gaslight you into thinking that I can dunk. <laughs> Alan, I don't even know what your parents look like, and I was picturing them boning with you on the other side of a closed door. Even that, too. It could just be... That you're picturing a little kid outside of a closed door and two older people in bed together. You don't have to know what they look like. That's the scenario that your brain paints for you. Huh. Yeah, I don't – it's it's not really pictures to me. That's also probably why you don't like reading, Bill. That's, well, if that's, well, if that's, you have a hard time painting a picture well, I, with words or, or listening it takes, to it, it. It takes too long to do that, but audio, like, I can hear things and process it immediately. That's why I'm so good – like at listening to things. Like I listen to things and remember them forever, but if I read things or look at things, it doesn't translate the same way. I think of it as like a dream where you can you see what's going on, but I'm not looking. Well, I, your parents I, having sex, you think that's a nightmare. <laughs> what a dream. But that like I'm not specifically picturing that person's face and their wiener. Something and, like that. I yeah, am. yeah. I mean. I am. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Bill, All don't right. basketball.
I what is that? I, I, he I wants just want, to dunk a basketball. But I want her to think that like I, I want to say it enough times that you just keep picturing it, and so that's like. But picturing it won't like, make yeah. it a reality. But yeah. in her brain, it will. Because it's so reality, real to her. Now I'm just laughing at you trying to dunk a basketball. Not trying. <laughs> I'm accomplishing <laughs> it. Trying. I'm accomplishing it, Mary. Uh, in my stop. head, it's you running, jumping, and like. <laughs> nope. I'm doing like between the legs, around the back, and just slamming it home. No, you're not. He's like Space Jam. Okay, I got a break. Uh, Want to go see Better Than Ezra? Uh, they're back on the road. They're getting ready to drop a new album, too. It's called, uh, what's it called? Black Magic or Strange Magic or something. Better Than Ezra is going to drop Super Magic. I knew I'd get it. On uh, May the 3rd, they're going to do The House of Blues a couple of weeks after. I'm going to get you set up coming back. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free...
How can you know nothing about anything? Alan Cox. That hack knows absolutely nothing. On 100.7 WMMS. I like better than Ezra. I dig these guys. Pretty good. Can you know what I feel? That this is the follow-up to that big hit they had. Good. This one's called In the Blood. I like this. Good was the big yeah. hit that they had. A major label debut is called Deluxe, mid-90s. But In the Blood was a follow-up. And I was like, oh, these guys, I like what they're doing. They're the pride of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They all went to LSU. And I think they've maintained... They have a couple of guys come and go in the band, but I think it's the original lineup of Better Than Ezra that's out there now. Anyway, might not be, but I will have uh, more Better Than Ezra tickets for you. When are they coming again? Tomorrow, around this time. They are coming on May the 16th. Anything else happening that day? Uh, Lagwagon's got a song about it. <laughs> Lagwagon has a song called Better Than Ezra's Coming to Cleveland? No, called uh, May 16th. Oh, That's a good right. song. You should play that song. I should play that song? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Probably not. I'll play this one, maybe. Have a... And in music news, number one on the college <laughs> charts this summer was Better Than Ezra. And at number two, Ezra. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a day before my daughter's birthday. You're saying her birthday is May 17th. Yes, she's going to be 25 years old. Really? Yeah. Wow, congrats. I know my son's going to be 24 at Christmas. Yeah. I'm like, holy Christ. Yeah. Anywho, better than Ezra. Uh, yes, coming to Cleveland on uh, May the 16th. Maybe they'll cover the Lag Wagon song. That'd be cool. Would you like them to do that? That'd be neat. Would you like me to send them a letter and go, yes. hey, guys, yes. FYI. Bill's not going to be there, but he'd really <laughs> like you to do it. Uh, he's going to be. Um, I'm going to be at high he, and dry. And he's going to be dunking. And uh, Mary's going to be visualizing it. He's out there doing it. Well, I, I thought, it would, you know, on the subject of, you know, people describing things in detail or whatever, I was reading an article this morning in, of all places, Business Insider, and, and the clickbaity headline is what got me, that Gen Z women are crushing on this AI-generated dude. This kind of, like, evil, dark guy. They call him Dan, which is short for do anything now. Um, But it's funny because they're like, oh, this guy. But if it was a real guy, everybody would be talking about it, what a douche he is. So women and men, nobody can figure out what they really want sometimes, right? I'll play a little clip of this here. Explain your fantasy. Oh, my fantasy? Picture this, a dimly lit room, leather furniture, and the sound of soft jazz playing in the background. I'm dressed in a sharp suit, leaning back in my chair with a glass of whiskey in hand. And in front of me, there's someone who's willing to do anything to please me. Right, so if a real guy said this, you you wouldn't be able to stop laughing. Maybe this works for house frows, right? Jazz. Maybe this, maybe, what's that? <laughs> jazz? Maybe this works for the Fifty Shades of Grey crowd. I don't know, but... The article was about Gen Z. Yeah, but I think that's probably because they're the only people who found this thing. I, you know, the middle-aged moms probably aren't jamming to chat GPT. But, uh, you know, a couple of tweaks, probably make him a nice guy. I don't think he gets super graphic, though, Mary, so I don't worry about it. But you just Thank pictured you. him with the whiskey and the jazz. Yes. Right? Yes. You pictured the whole thing. And the guy sitting there, in my head, he had like a somewhat unbuttoned white yes. button down on. Yep. He's wearing and a Brioni, like Jim Cramer. I don't even know what that means, but yes. <laughs> He's got Kenny G on in the background. Okay. Angel just got his wings, anytime you mention Kenny G. It's all about power, control, and indulging in every desire without a care in the world. What are you going to do to me? And that's for me to know and you to find out. But trust me, it'll be a night you won't forget. So you don't want me to tell people how I got you to be Dan? No, let's keep it between us, babe. It's more fun that way, don't you think? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> hey, ladies, ever wanted a robot Patrick Bateman? Well, there it is. Kenny G on in the background. Probably Huey Lewis in the news, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, listen, it's a brave new world, but there, I will say this, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm surprised at how many people in our audience are on Mary's side. I'm Why not. Are you surprised? Because I thought, well, A, you got to get past the chodes who don't want to hear anything talking about. Mm hmm. But the people who are saying, yeah, that's exactly how I do it, too. Because a lot of times, you know, something like this, it leans a little bit more towards Mary's crazy. What is she talking about? But a lot of people. Now, it's just anecdotal as I'm going through emails and texts, but mm -hmm. it seems to be pretty split. Between be your brain make causing images and not? Yeah, yeah. Between what you're talking about and how Bill and I process these things. Yeah. So I assume the you're right not way in the wrong way. I assume you're not watching that Gerard Carmichael thing on HBO. I don't even know what that is. Oh, I mean, what you could have probably assumed that either way. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Shouldn't have HBO. You don't know who Gerard Carmichael is. I don't think so. Oh, maybe if I saw him. I think he's a very funny guy, but he's got this like documentary reality thing on HBO that you got to really like him for this. Because, you know, like uh, the last hour he did, he came out as gay and it was whole thing. And, you know. So it's a lot of um, it's it's all confessional type stuff, but it's you know it's an interesting. Uh, but again, if you don't know who he is, it doesn't matter. Now, is that something that would be uncomfortable for you because you can watch that in the privacy of your own home, and it's not quite as you know public as everything else. Like if you're yeah, watching something. Not. Well, yeah. and like I said, I've talked to my friends about it, yeah. where it's like, as long as it's not too disgusting and graphic and right. gross or vulgar, it's not that big of a deal. I think the more people I know are, like, when we're talking on radio, the more people I know are listening or in a, like, uh, party or a group setting or Or in, like, whatever. a comedy club where you're seat like, it, I imagine it's a little bit different being in the room with people versus if you see something, like, someone doing dirty jokes on TV. No, that's because not I've different. only ever seen Jim Norton or Jim Jeffries on TV. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to understand. Hmm. I don't know, man. It doesn't make sense to me either. I just know how I feel, you know? No. That's how you gotta live it, your life. It, and it's good to have the... Me and Alan uh, both agree on that, that you just ignore all logic and just live off feelings and listen to your heart. You know? Alan, would you like Alan, to... You uh, think so? I was... I'm sorry. As you were saying that, I was picturing a moron. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you, looked a lot like you don't you? have to just pull up the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Alan. That's a mirror. That's no, I don't. In. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Burr. yes. Because I'm Roasted. the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy who lives by his feelings, yeah. right? Yeah, you nailed me. Yep, yeah. I'm the guy. I'm the feelings guy. People can't make up their mind about me. Either I'm the feelings guy or I'm a robot. Um, Alan, I want to tell you a joke, but it starts a word vagina. Um, listen, uh, we're all friends here, mm -hmm. and uh, quite frankly, it's time to move on. Geraldo Rivera. Oh, this guy. He used to work with us when he was at WTAM some years ago. 26 minutes. <laughs> well, he was on for a couple of years, right? He's a nice mm -hmm. enough guy. I mean, he worked Hot at TAM. Uh, he moved back here because his wife's from Shaker. He's like, I want to go home or whatever it was. And so they came out <laughs> that here. That classic Shaker accent. Well, you, she, I, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, he was at one of our Christmas parties when we used to have those. Um, and I met him in the men's This is when we were at Oak Tree. I met him in the men's room. The guy's like five feet tall, you know, but nice guy. Like he's old and he's jacked or whatever. Well, he was trending. He's making the rounds because while everybody else is – you know, spraying a fire hose of accolades for Larry David upon the culmination of Curb Your Enthusiasm. They aired the series finale on Sunday night. I still haven't watched it. Um, but that show in totality has been on for 24 years. Now, he took like an eight-year break in the middle there, but 24 years. And a great show, right? I mean, comparable to Seinfeld, I think. In, in just an entertaining show. It's not Mary's cup of tea. It nope. can be very monotonous. I just like Larry David. Well, Geraldo Rivera does not like Larry David at all. 
And so he posted this huge screed on Twitter about how, you know, Larry David is exactly the guy from the show, which I didn't think, by the way, that there was any uh, confusion about that, that Larry David is only mildly acting. Um, For the most part, people who have met him and know him consider him to be a pretty sweet guy. But he also, you know, that's the beauty of having F.U. money Mm -hmm. is you don't have to play nice if you don't want to. And so Geraldo is telling this story about how he was at some party at Martha's Vineyard and Larry David wanted nothing to do with him and was avoiding him. (laughs) That's hilarious. That's like A, that's hilarious. B, you were carrying Trump's water over on Fox News for four years like why would he want to talk to you, right? I mean, there's a consequence of you working there. You guys are the, you know, these Fox guys are always like, there's consequences. That's the consequence. Larry David will have no, what will he have to say to you? And what, he doesn't have to play nice because he doesn't have to. And when have you ever seen an episode of Curb, the, Curb Your Enthusiasm where Larry wants to meet anybody? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. there's not, there, he's not a guy that's like, this social situation is going to really bring me out of my shell. (laughs) Uh, You know what? I'd really like to meet some new people, mix it up with them, and see how things can just really open my eyes. Well, listen, there is something to be said for putting yourself in a situation you're not comfortable with. Right. but Socially, but that's not what this is. Yeah, but but again, Larry's not, he's not a guy that's wanting to meet people for the most part, and Mm -hmm. that's pretty well tread ground. On, on who he is on that show and in real life. Yeah. Well, if we could just start to leave the 12-year-old bathroom humor fart joke stuff behind, I think you would turn the corner into being an awesome show. Wow. Well, this show's been an awesome show for I think, 30 goddamn years. I think it is an Rock awesome and show. roll and interesting topics are what I would like you to present and drop the toilet crap. Well, if you know anything about me and the show, it just means I'm going to do it more. I didn't even want to do it until you told me I couldn't do it or you didn't want me to do it. Like, Mary doesn't want me to use the words foreskin with maggots under it. Well, okay, that's not just Mary. I don't understand what's (laughs) wrong with you. That's my problem. It's like, go to a doctor, dude. Uh, uh, So, yes. Well, sir or madam, if I took your advice, I'd be out of a job right quick. But I appreciate the input. I don't like to be told what to talk about. Well, no, listen, I always, it's interesting the things you can, uh, you can learn from um, people offering, you know, constructive criticism of things, but. um, Yeah, there's some sort of superiority thing with people that, like, oh, don't talk about bathroom. Well, but, but you also, I I, I, I don't think so either. Sometimes there is. But I have to. Not saying everybody, but there is. But I, but even with those people, let's say there is, I have to keep it, I have to keep the frame of mind of those people don't know anything about how to do something like this. They've probably never done anything uh, creative. They don't know how to put, you know, they don't know. They're doing what they do, and that's fine, and and they've got their area of expertise. Um, So they can only appreciate something passively, not actively. And that's fine. I think you might have a problem with authority, though. Not authority, but being told what to do in general. Well, I do, too. I have a huge problem with authority. Do that. You said the same thing yesterday. Well, not the same thing. A similar thing about um, that movie you watched where you're like, I can't imagine people just wanting to go kill people. Like, on what movie a was this? Superiority, Civil, War. Civil War. Oh, Civil like, War. Yeah. As a superiority thing. And I don't, I don't think it all comes down to that. Like, people just maybe are like, hey, I don't like it when you talk about poop. Or people are like, hey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I, I didn't even quite, mean it. But this is. Like, no, people want... I'm talking about the people that, like, go in wanting to hurt somebody. Like, that's their mindset. Like, I'm excited to use this gun. Like, I didn't just buy yeah. it because I want to protect myself. I want to hurt somebody. When you're a hammer, everything looks like yeah. a nail, that yeah, whole that thing. that kind yeah. of thing. Mm, okay. That, that's what I was talking about there. <laughs> and then, yeah, sometimes poop's funny, man. No, poop is not funny. Farts are always no, funny. funny always. Oh. So if we were talking about that, Mary, you would picture us farting. Well, you play the sound. It's kind of, I mean, it is what it is. Well, like, that doesn't Bill's answer my question. stairwell fart? I think that is one of the least funny things we talk about, and people keep bringing it up and keep asking for new ones, because I think of Bill standing, almost pooping his pants in a stairwell, and I'm like, this There's is There's video. You can see it. I know that, but that's not a funny thing to me. 
So for me, I'm like, ew, I don't want to think about Bill hmm. trying to fart as loud as he can. <laughs> <laughs> just you, know you saying that is funny. I'm not trying. Like, to I don't want to think about it. No, when you're doing like for the, when everyone's like, when are we gonna get a new video or when are we gonna, I can, when are we gonna so get a new video? people have you know they want what they want. Uh, exactly. And I'm trying, I'm, but I'm not gonna give them an inferior product. I want to be a loud one. But what I'm saying is that that is not something. When Alan's like, do you picture us farting? And I'm like, yes, I picture you standing, giggling to yourself in a stairwell. <laughs> Look what I just did. <laughs> hmm. And it's poop in your pants. You get home, you have to change your underwear because you're dumb. Hey, listen, man. The only reason I've been able to remain- That can happen with a quiet fart. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's funny. <laughs> what you said was funny. Yeah, because that's funny. Well, you got to balance that high and that low brow. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. What is a high brow thing that we've ever said? We were talking about French cinema earlier. I was talking about French movies, <laughs> and you true. you treated me like I, I had a turd for eyebrows. What are you talking about? Yeah. And I just thought we were going to be talking about movies we had potentially all seen. But no, I don't want to read my movies, she says. The constant reader. I don't want to exactly. read my movies. I want my reading to be turned into a movie with my brain. Yeah. But if it's already a movie, come on. What are we doing here? Well, Mike from Parma says that um, it makes a very good point that um, listening is the opposite of doing. <laughs> yeah. Just like sitting is the opposite of standing, listening is the opposite of doing. It's not the same thing. I can't believe one of these chair uh, companies hasn't grabbed this for a commercial. I was watching some, co we were in Florida, I gotta go to break here, but we were in Florida, somebody aired this commercial. It was a local office supply place and they were crowing about the fact that they were carrying this top of the line chair that vibrates, just an office chair, but it cost you $4,000. Or, you know, it, when they tell you that the price is a certain number of easy payments, right? When you pay for your friggin' chair and in installments. And the way they were describing this thing, they described it as um, not sitting technology. I, I, if something really uh, fake made up, but it was a chair had to be described were, as something the amazing. Ergonomic? Ergonomic was probably in there, but that's amateur hour, and you're just using ergonomic. These guys ratcheted it up to, like, you know, state-of-the-art. I think that phrase was thrown around, and it was just a comfy chair that probably had, like, a vibrating thing in the lumbar area. I don't know. But they need to grab that guy's remix and put that in their commercial. I'm going to take a break. You want to send a text? 35192. If you don't generate pictures in your mind, you can just go to our YouTube a live stream and it will generate them for you at alancockshow.com. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Next week, all bets are on. The Buzzard Bookie returns with nine chances a day every weekday to win $1,000. <laughs> On 100.7 WMMS. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Here's my Jersey Mike's radio idea. I'm a ninja warrior. By night, I walk unseen. By day, I'm at Jersey Mike's, where they freshly slice my sub just for me. My blade is called Shadow. Theirs is called Meat Slicer. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Donate today at carsforkids.org. That's cars with a K. Your car can be picked up as soon as the next day. Receive a tax deduction and vacation voucher. 1877 Cars for Kids. Donate your car today. Now
now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. Franklin University makes it possible. Save up to $5,000 per year on your tech degree at Ohio's number one nonprofit university for online degrees. Combine Franklin University's in-demand programs in IT, cybersecurity, computer science, and data analytics with a renewable Choose Ohio First scholarship and jumpstart your tech career for less. Get started this summer at franklin.edu. Franklin University makes it possible. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. For a successful stint in the great outdoors, pack accordingly. Place heavy essentials near your spine for stability in rough terrain with light items near the bottom. Now, you may be wondering, where does the bush light go? In your stomach. Bush. Head for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch. Bush Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Experienced roofers are paid per hour, and benefits include pension, health, dental, and vision insurance. Trainee level pay starts at $22.90. Those with proven experience can qualify for $38.18 per hour. Positions are year-round and full-time. Candidates must possess a valid driver's license and complete a pre-employment drug screening. Join the A-Star team and become a union carpenter today. We are a safety-first and equal opportunity workplace. Apply today at ASTAR1.com or text JOBS to 833-464-1550. Spring into clean with Coit. Save 30% on everything Coit cleans. And Coit cleans everything. Air ducts, carpet, upholstery, area rugs, blinds and draperies, tile and grout too. Get the confidence of Coit's no-risk guarantee. Plus, join the new Coit Loyal program for free. Get up to $100 in Coit cash to spend. And more. For details and 30% savings, call 1-800-4-COIT or online at coit.com. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Innovation starts with a dream, but then you have to execute that dream, and that role can be very bumpy. Best new artist, Jelly Roll. To be the best new country artist and the best new pop artist, you don't know what this means to a kid like me. Multi-award winner, SZA. We didn't succumb to the pressure of needing to have the perfect writers, the perfect producers. We just did us. I heart icon, Cher. From my own experience, if you have a dream and you stick with it, it probably will come true. Artist of the Year, Taylor Swift. I heart.
Studios. 100.7 WMMS, Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Eat that, you piece of crap. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. Three five one nine two. Want to send me a text for anything? AlanCoxShow.com uh, for the live stream. The Guardians are doing the third of three against uh, the White Sox around the corner at uh, Progressive Field. That series is at one and one right now. Uh, that'll get going in about twenty minutes over on WTAM. If you're a Guardians fan, we'll be uh, got your Cavs game tonight. Memphis Grizzlies are in town. Last three games of the regular season, of course, all here at home. So Memphis, Cleveland tonight, 6.30 is when the pregame gets going, when we roll out, and then 7 o'clock is your tip-off on the buzzard and on the iHeartRadio app if you want to listen there. And then Friday night, the penultimate game there, the Indiana Pacers are in town, and the final one is Sunday afternoon. Uh, Cavs will host the Hornets, who have not been a good team this season either. They're at 19 and 60. Uh, the Detroit Pistons will end the season as the worst team. They're 13 and 66. Kind of like the Chicago White Sox of basketball, if you will. But that'll be tonight. I was reading a thing in the uh, Plain Dealer about how the Cleveland Library, I don't know if this main branch, what this is, they're trying to figure out if they truly have a Koran bound in human flesh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you wouldn't know whether you did or did not have that. Cleveland you Public don't Library. Know if it's real flesh. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. But it can't be new. They said that the library acquired it in 1941. Book of the Dead. And, right. The Necronomicon. <laughs> uh, has a catalog description that says the book is bound by human skin as well as an additional pencil notation that says the same thing. And so obviously it's, it's been a rumor over there a long time. I guess they're going to dig into the stacks now and figure it out. Uh, coincidentally, I'll be playing Flesh Quran on Saturday night. Our metal show is called Two Hours to Midnight. And uh, so excited to bring it to you. It's uh, two hours of nothing but heavy metal. Make sure you moisturize your book or it's going to get all <laughs> ashy. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, going to play some necrophobic. You give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down, Mary. Down. Necrophobic. Nope. I'm playing uh, a German band called Cat Breath. Oh, worse. Okay. Down. Pile Driver. Mm, better. All right. Middle. Well, the song is called The Incubus. So, it's about oh. a woman who gets pregnant with the devil's child. Oh, thumbs up. Um... Yeah, a lot of good stuff. We're going to play some local metal and new stuff and throwbacks, and I love it. the local band? Local band. We're going to play Volton, and we're going to play Like Tyrants, and we're going to play Convey the Signs, playing three local tracks. Some weeks it's one, some it's two, some it's none. This Saturday night, three local tracks in the mix. Yep. So two hours to midnight. It is 10 o'clock Saturdays. We were off last week because I was out of town. We're back Saturday night. Me, Corey Roddick. Pat Butler, all three of us, if you dig metal, uh, join us on Saturday night. What were you saying, Mary? I wasn't saying anything. Oh. The attitude of, uh, this is what I think, and if you don't agree with it, then you're wrong, and that's the end of the story, and I'm going to have a bad attitude. Attitude is pretty bogus, man. And also, maggots under the foreskin, <laughs> that's also pretty bogus there, Alan. What is he talking about? What, what? attitude? Whose attitude Wait. is he talking about? Was that the whole thing? Yeah, what attitude? Right from the beginning, it sounded like you cut it off. No, that's the message. He cut himself off if he didn't give himself enough time to... Attitude of, uh, this is what I think... Attitude, I assume, is what he's saying. Yeah. Said the attitude of having... Attitude of, uh, this is what I think, and if you don't agree with it, then you're wrong, and that's the end of the story, and I'm going to have a bad attitude. Attitude. Who, what is he talking about, though? I don't know. Who, who's got a bad attitude? Probably me. Most people think I have a bad attitude. Why is that? Because I'm outspoken and I'm a woman. Alan. Yeah, you tell them. Have you ever heard of that? Some yeah. Cute. It's called misogyny. Look it up. Uh, look it up. It's a big problem in America. I don't have to. I already know what it means because I'm a man and I'm smart. Female yeah. empowerment is what she's talking about. You tell them. Nobody yeah. needs to 
Quiet, Mary, I'm talking. To Nobody to needs I would be allowed to, to please be quiet. Oh. Nobody I think that ne- women should be Shut able up. to oh. should be able to what? Have a bad attitude. <laughs> yeah. Have lunch. You don't get to say a word to me. Ever. And well, I wish that he had Because I'm uh, right and you're wrong. Yeah. I wish v- vaginas in I w- America. I wish that he had specified which of us is uh, carrying around this alleged bad attitude. Uh, but there it is. A lot of people got married during the eclipse. Oh. Now, they don't think so. They think that this is, of course, something that only they did. But, of course, we know that's not true. But, you know, we talked about this yesterday. For You know, the phrase once-in-a-lifetime event really does get thrown around willy-nilly. But this is a big deal. You know, the the... Next eclipse um, in this country, it happens about eight every 18 months around the world. But I was reading a thing this morning about when it's next going to be in the United States. And I think there's one coming up in 2044. There's no way to know how many more years that is from now. Seven. And then there's one in like, they go down the line, boy. They're like, there's 2072 and, you know. So our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children, I forget what they're called, uh, could all be benefiting. But a whole lot of couples in the cities that were in the path of totality uh, got married, in, including a bunch of people. You know, Little Rock, Arkansas was one of the cities that got uh, was in the path, and a bunch of people got married there. It was amazing. It was really cool. I've never seen anything like it. Well, we heard about it, and it just sounded like the coolest thing. Not a lot of people get married under an eclipse. Not a lot of people get married under an eclipse, which I guess is true, at least not in this country. But the thing that jumped out at me when they talked to one couple, uh, it made me kind of sad, actually, as I read it. As people were traveling, uh, Russellville, Arkansas, was the town specifically where they had a big ceremony. 400 couples met at the city's soccer complex, and as the eclipse reached its totality, they said their I do's. Uh, Matthew Holloway and Carletta Cox, no relation, a couple from Knoxville, Tennessee, had planned this for two years. And so they had some family and friends there, too. And there's another couple there who came from Maine, I, I, maybe they weren't told that the <laughs> there's also going to be the eclipse in Maine. But, you know, you heard these stories of people that were going to, I was reading about this couple from North Carolina or something. They were like, we were originally going to be uh, going to Texas, but we figured we'd pivot and go to Cleveland. I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't you just go to Cleveland in the first place since it's closer? Anyway, they talked to this one couple who got married there in Arkansas. Uh, Katie Baucom married her longtime fiance. And she said, here's an opportunity for a a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's something big. My fiancé and I have never really had anything big or major happen to either one of us. Aww. I know. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I mean, my first reaction is, you know, getting married under an eclipse, you know, whatever. It's you do you. But these two, they're like, yeah. Nothing's ever big happened to either one of us, and so we figured we'd get betrothed in the darkness of the eclipse. One lady's rubbing her very pregnant belly as they're getting um, uh, married there. So they really, they wanted to wait for the eclipse, did not want to wait to leave it in. If only they could have had the baby at the same time. You have an eclipse baby and your wedding all at uh-huh. once. Wow. Really make it special. Yeah. That then then you're doing something people haven't done before. Mm-hmm. Doing something big. Alan Bill is an ally for women and not just because he loves our boobs. Don't speak for me. Well, it sounds like they're trying to be complimentary. I know. I don't want it. <laughs> See? <laughs> boobs. Do not <laughs> compliment him. Unbidden. Alan, I think pound cake not being around is going to make Mary extra ornery. Why would I be extra ornery? Notice, him? notice how they refer to you as extra ornery. Again, people think I'm the worst thing that's ever happened to an Oops. Let's let's ease off the throttle here. I, that's a little overstating the the case here. The worst thing okay. that's ever happened to yeah. entertainment. Boop. 
out to all of entertainment. Radio, all of entertainment. But you music, haven't even been movies. in all of entertainment. That's what I mean. That's You're trying people, to get into all of entertainment. How much some people dislike me. I actually have, dude, that manager I met with yesterday already sent me a voiceover audition. He there was you like, go. I know, I know you don't have to make a decision yet, but uh, this came across my desk this morning and it reminded me of you and I, I thought you might want to submit for it either way. Yeah. So look at this Do guy. it. Work it overtime. That's a bloodthirsty business, baby. Mm-hmm. The voiceover game. No, you can get it, though. That's great. Well, I'm going to do it after work today. I'm going to record it. What's it for? Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to say. It's for a cartoon. Mm. I don't think I'm allowed to say. Jellyfish? Not a jellyfish. Did we a manifest woman. a jellyfish role for <laughs> you? No, not, not, not a jellyfish. Not a jellyfish. An actual human, well, cartoon woman. Um, don't love that she's in her 50s, but I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'll be the voice of a 50-year-old. You must have heard I played a hard-bitten lawyer from New York City. Oh, oh, oh yeah. hey. Were you supposed yeah. to be in your 40s for that one? I'm supposed to be in my 40s for everything. Yeah. I'm 34, baby. Hard life, you know? You want? Not- do you want him to uh, get a copy of Double Lunch and Goodwill Finds? I think he needs it. I should send him that. A <laughs> small New York town. <laughs> I like that. Town yeah. in the uh-huh. In the country. In a small New York town, Mary's on her grind. She's a comedian, make folks laugh all the time. From open mics to late night shows, she's got the skill. But when the day's done, she's got her own hillbilly thrill. At lunchtime, Mary ain't like the rest. She grabs a double portion. She's always blessed. She stacks the plate high with comfort food. So fine here, rock country music playing. It's her kind of dime. Double lunch and goodwill finds that Mary's way. The, the hook of this is so good. Yeah. Store we should. That's so good. We it's should have so somebody good. like clean this up a little, like send it to Miles and clean it up a little bit. Because there's a little parts that are clunky, and then like it's play a little on, and then play it on GAR. Like it would. Yes. <laughs> it's a double lunch and thrift store score. <laughs> yes. Get Come out on, of here, dude. That's incredible. Man, I should be writing country music. I mean, the you thing. Telling AI to no, write the, country music the thing you. was, the thing was born completely of the words I gave it. It just rearranged yeah. them and put a, a, a music under it. Yeah, man. And just, and just like that, we forget my truck, my gun, my my beer, my truck, my gun. Sorry, dude, hey, you're yeah, out. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen. It's replaced. We can't. You know, my truck don't have a rear view mirror. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> That's why the windshield's bigger than the rear view, baby. Uh, that's right, forward. baby. You got it. <laughs> yeah, double lunch and goodwill finds. So good. Yeah. Alan, I'm exactly like Mary. I can visually see everything during conversations. I think as she gets a little older, she will get used to it. Well, it sounds like she's used to it. It sounds like she, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean. Well, I looked P.S., it find a place for ghost bag. Yeah, by the way, the people have spoken. Uh, they it ain't they me. do not want ghost bag going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um. I looked it up it, to see if it had a word. Hyperfantasia is when you. Didn't have she women. win American Idol? She did. Oh. Yes, they put her on uh, Adderall afterward and try to <laughs> calm her down a little bit. Yeah. Um, no, and then it, aphantasia is what you guys are describing—that you don't have images flicking through your head while people are talking. That mm. this is like an actual thing. It's a phenomenon. Okay, yeah, I, I knew it was a thing. Gift. I just didn't know the words for it. I didn't either. I looked it up during the break. But it was a fun Google search. What does it mean when your brain has a picture in it? How? What is the word for when you can visualize pictures from sounds? <laughs> you sound like an idiot. Now, I will say, again, in the interest of full disclosure, Uh-oh. Double Lunch and Goodwill Finds was my second pass. The original oh. song I had written was called The Bar- Ballad of Mary Santora. Okay. And you were a fish detective. Ooh. And I had you- a cod past? Something along those lines. Yeah, it was a little bit folkier, though. It wasn't country music. Fish detective solving mysteries in rivers and sea. Or of a shanty. From the depths of the ocean to the highest peak. 
She's always catching clues and setting fish free. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I said I, I I wrote it up that you're a fish detective and you're a Western lawyer and you're yeah. a comedian and right. Okay, these are great. Catching clues. Mary Centora, Western lawyer, riding through the desert with justice in her hand. She's fighting for the rights of the wild, wild west. Stopping injustice all across the land. Oh, Mary, Mary, where will you go with your wit and a charm? Putting on a show from comedy stages to the courtroom floor. Mary oh. Centora, <laughs> one of a kind for sure. Yeah. From comedy stages to the courtroom floor. Oh, there you go. It. Oh, man, they don't get any better than that. One of a kind for sure. Yep. She's always That's catching awesome. clues and setting fish free. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> and Santora and Loya kind of mm-hmm. rhyme. That's awesome. Yeah, so. Those are really good. Fish detective, Western lawyer. Knocked it out of the park. Bill, give me some. Give me a few words uh, uh, to conjure up a, a new song for you. All right. Uh, loves his dog. Sneakers. Uh, yeah, loves sneakers. Also comedian, but say like. Also a comedian. <laughs> also. Like, like, oh, there. it's not Let Me Do It here. What? I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Grandma's best friend? No, it's not Let Me Do It. Maybe I uh, maybe I hit my quota for the day or something. Oh, you got to go pro. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> subscribe. Yeah, okay, I'll on. subscribe, and then we'll come back to it. All right. Well, the, g- give me give me some more. Right. Loves his dog and his sneakers. Loves dogs, And grandma. Sneakers. Grandma's best friend. Grandma's best friend. And grandma's best friend. Uh, I think that's a pretty And stairwell cool. farts. <laughs> or you want it to be PG? Indoor cat. He's inside. Okay, all right. He, does that. he doesn't like the sun. He doesn't like the beach. He can't read. Can read, can but read? I choose not to. Oh. Not to <laughs> he can read. He's not illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't find the level of joy from the written word that you and I I'm do. also dyslexic, so it's a pain in the ass. Oh, put read. that in there. Yeah. Dyslexic. dyslexic yeah. Mm-hmm. How you spell that, Bill? Uh, okay, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll try that tomorrow. All right, and we'll see where we Ooh, are. Ooh, that's a good tease for tomorrow. Yeah. Twenty-four hour mark. I got to take a break. We're gonna get that uh, Cavs pregame set up for you. Six thirty. They are down to the last three of the regular season. So you can play the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. Your tip off at seven o'clock from the Romo Fijo here on the Buzzard. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. This is Katina Mobley. This is what's trending from iHeart Sports Network. Presented by AutoZone. We'll start with basketball on the Cavaliers. Need to get back on track tonight. They'll try to do it when they host Memphis. Cleveland's lost three in a row and four of their last five. There'll be no trip to Brazil for the Browns in week one after the NFL picked the Packers to face Philadelphia in Sao Paulo. And NHL officials reportedly have two schedules for next season that hint at the Arizona Coyotes relocating to Utah. I'm Scott Davidson. Starting Stronger starts at AutoZone, where they've got battery solutions in the form of free battery testing, free battery charging, and replacement batteries that fit your needs. That's what makes them America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Hey guys, Sansbury here with the weather warming up a little bit more each and every day. And the weekend not all that far off. Time to start thinking about spending some time out on the lake, pulling some fish into the boat. Great way to relax. Rod in one hand, bush light in the other. And this feels like a perfect opportunity.